Chris Hope to kick it off for Tennessee. We are set to go between the Volunteers and the Razorbacks. Corey Nichols brings it back for the Razorbacks and gets to the outside out to the 30 yard line. So a good return for Nichols 30 yards and the Razorbacks will start in pretty good position. Now there's the quarterback Pete Burks for the Razorbacks. He has Dave gotten better as the season has gone along. Yeah, he's getting a lot more confidence. He's a young quarterback just a sophomore. He makes those sophomore type mistakes. They're hoping for a big game out of him today. His four touchdown passes interesting. They've all come to the same man Anthony Eubanks. Gets outside for three yards. Jason Parker pins him. Al Wilson hitting first. Here's the starters for the Arkansas Razorbacks brought to by, brought to you by Burger King. Scott Rivers is their veteran at left tackle. Grant Garrett starts at center. All five have started every game so far for the Razorbacks. Russ Brown a little bit banged up. Pete Burks the quarterback. Oscar Malone has run extremely well the last four games. And Anthony Eubanks is their big play wide receiver. When you talk about Anthony Eubanks, you talk about big wide plays receivers. He's the only one that's really caught the football with any any kind of consistency. Eubanks split out wide to this near side on the handoff goes again to Malone, picks his way right up the middle, and goes out to a first down to the 47-yard line. Jason Parker makes the stop. Volunteer defense brought to you by Burger King up front. They've been pretty good this year, led by Jonathan Brown. Tyrone Hines having an all-star type season at middle linebacker. On the secondary, Jason Parker is the veteran back there. Terry Fair is an outstanding cover guy, but he's really been hobbled by a bad ankle. Of and course, Tyrone Hines. Yeah, that's Tyrone Hines. He's the man in the middle. He's all over the field. He's got big plays. He makes a lot of plays. They expect a huge game out of him today. Malone for the third straight time. Not as much yard as there as he's been after a pickup of two. Tyrone Hines right there on cue to make the stop for Tennessee. Dave, let's talk about the loss of Leonard Little. Of course, he was injured a couple of weeks ago in the South Carolina game, the game we did, and he really changed his Tennessee's defense. Oh, he does because he offers so much. He can play both a backer spot. He can come up on the line. He blitzes. When they lost him, they lost a lot of their play. He had eight and a half sacks. He led their team. He put pressure on the quarterback. That's tough to recover from some a loss like that. Second and long, about nine yards to go for Pete Burks and the Razorbacks. His first pass coming up. And that's going to be thrown away. Good coverage over there by Tennessee. Hubert Laudermilk was the closest receiver. And Raymond Austin on the coverage. Well, one of the things that Tennessee does so well is those long pass conversions on the corners out here. Now, when Burks rolls out, you see this is man to man coverage. They've got him just perfect coverage. You can't throw it. You have to throw it away in a situation like that. But when Burks rolls strong side, he just takes, he only narrows down to about one third of the field. Razorbacks, 32% on third down conversions. They have a third and about 10. Jonathan Brown slides over from his left defensive end spot to pin Burks after a game of about three yards. So the Razorbacks will have to punt for the first time. Now, Bob, you've seen a lot of Tennessee. Interesting, they're switching. Jeff Coleman and Jonathan Brown have switched sides. They flip flopped. So they're playing Jonathan Brown more to where that option side's going to go. Matt Wade into punt for the Razorbacks. 39 yard average. Terry Fair drops back for Tennessee. Fair is very dangerous back there, but again, hobbled by that bad angle. High wobbly spiral. Fair will feel it in his own 13. Razorbacks good kick coverage. He is pinned at his own 17 yard line. 38 yard punt and a three yard return by Terry Fair. Down covering was Vincent Bradford for the Razorbacks. And so Peyton Manning comes to the field for the first time. Peyton admitted last week he really didn't play for him. He was pretty just he was pretty upset about that. I think his focus is really to come out and do a lot better reading. We saw him do things last week against Memphis that you don't see forcing the ball into coverage and that's what he's known for his great reads. Manning. Play fake and fires across the middle complete to his tight end Dustin Moore out to the 40 yard line. Philip Hayes makes the stop for the Razorbacks and a first down for Tennessee at a gain of 21. 
Here's the Tennessee lineup. We told you that Trey Teague has switched from tackle to center, basically because Melvin Bradley is that terrific nose guard for Arkansas. Peyton Manning's your quarterback, Jay Graham, the tailback, and the terrific wideouts, Joey Kennett, Marcus Nash. That's a first down for Tennessee. And Manning again on the play fake. Going long, Peerless Price. That's knocked away. Zach Painter on the coverage for the Razorbacks. When that's outstanding coverage by Painter, he's running with Price. He's just running step for step. At the last second, there's a real tendency to put your hand on the ball, on the man, and watch. He doesn't put that left hand on. He just swats it away with that right hand just to, break, to make the ball incomplete. Again, getting a lot of a lot of focus will be on that center snap because Manning knows that it's a different center. It takes a little bit of timing. It's different. But that's just an outstanding defensive player by Painter. So Tennessee has thrown its first two times. And now the Volunteers have a second and 10 at their own 39 yard line. Three straight passes from Manning. Puts some air under that one and throws it away, basically. Price was covered again by Zach Painter. And now Manning has a third and one. Well, Bob, I thought it was interesting. I said to Philip Fulmer yesterday in our talks, I said, why don't would you ever think about just letting Manning throw it every time? He said, hey, it doesn't bother me. Let him go ahead and throw it. Here's Arkansas's defense. We talked about Melvin Bradley, their terrific middle guard, and their linebackers, very active. Mark Smith in the middle is an all-star candidate. Their secondary, they've had some injuries back there. They flip-flop some people. Marcus Campbell has three interceptions to lead the way. And there's Bradley in the middle. He's the force. He's real quick. He's got 61 tackles. He leads his team in tackles. That's amazing from a nose guard position. Manning, another pass. Again, throws it long, and that's going to be overthrown. This time intended for Joey Kent. And again, Marcus Campbell, good coverage by the Razorbacks. And Arkansas was able to get pressure on Manning that time. Ken Anderson, 87, got a lot of pressure on Manning, dumped him back. So Arkansas does what they have to do. To stay in this football game, they've got to keep Tennessee deep in their own territory, force them to punt. And so again, Tennessee will punt on its first possession. Dropping deep is Eubanks for the Razorbacks and Larry Binion into punt for Tennessee. Good kick. Eubanks will go back to his 15 yard line and look for help, but nobody's coming except Warren Shirts. And White's down there to make the stop for Tennessee. No score. 11 29 to go in the first quarter. Tennessee and Arkansas renew their series. Volunteers lead the all-time set. Six wins to one for the Razorbacks. Arkansas's only win in the series here at Neyland Stadium in 1992. Razorbacks stay on the ground, and Oscar Malone has nowhere to go. Craig King, a big hitter on the Tennessee team, up to make the stop, maybe after a gain of a yard. Well, you're not supposed to allow backside protection to get in there. And backside, pro he's on the backside of the play. You'll see him 44 come into your screen. He's not supposed to make that play. That just shows you what team speed is. One thing that Arkansas is doing is they're splitting their guards and their centers a little bit, especially on Burlesworth's side. This time, Burks makes the handoff, looks for help, and throws it incomplete. I think he was throwing it away, and a good scramble over there as Eubanks tried to make the catch at about the 39 yard line. So Arkansas faced with a third and long. Oh, and that was good backside protection that time and good backside coverage. When Burks does that little play fake and rolls out there, that backside per person is supposed to come out, does a perfect job of coming and pressuring Burks on the play. Interesting aspect Nick Gesture has been starting at the outside linebacker for tennis, but Craig King. Who is usually better against the run is in there today. That shows what Tennessee expects from Arkansas. They're going to try to run the football. Here they might have to throw it though, third and long. Draw played him alone. Picks his way out to the 22 yard line, far short of the first down, as Hines and Jason Parker comes up from his safety spot to make the stop, and the Razorbacks will have to punt it away. Well, that was a good play by Hines that time. He's in that middle. He just kind of gets gets kind of blocked in there, just dives around, comes right back, and tackles Malone. If he doesn't get Malone, he's going to pick up the first down. Terry Fair drops back to his 40-yard line to field the punt. He expects from Matt Waite his second punt of the day. High, lofty kick. Fair will take a fair catch at his own. 37 yard line. We're scoreless here, Tennessee and Arkansas, as the Volunteers take the football. Now, around the SEC is presented by Morgan Keegan, the South's premier investment firm. 
You see the games today, Alabama at Mississippi State. Vanderbilt at a suddenly hot Kentucky team. LSU plays at Ole Miss. South Carolina at Florida, and Georgia plays at Auburn. Tennessee threw the ball on its first possession. Takio Spikes of Auburn leads the SEC in turnovers and takeaways. Our player of the week. Manning threw the ball every time Tennessee had on its first possession, five straight. Now he hands off to Jay Graham, breaks a tackle, and gets out across the 45 yard line. He fumbled the football. It's loose on the ground, and Arkansas has recovered in Tennessee territory. This is not what you want to have happen when you're, when you're playing on emotions. Jay Graham puts the ball on the ground. You cannot do that. He gets hit right here. He picks up a nice game. Now, right in here, he picks up nice yardage. you got to protect that football. Right there, he kind of gets it ripped out. It just, no, he doesn't even get it ripped out. It just kind of comes out. Benoit Kennedy, I think, is the one who hit him and knocked it free. And so the first turnover of the game is the ball to the Razorbacks in Tennessee territory at the 47-yard line. This is what Arkansas has played for, field position opportunities. Burks makes the ball looking long, throws across the middle. It's complete, a big hit. But the catch is made by Michael Snowden, Tyrone Hines, and Raymond Austin. Put the wood to him. Oh. But a good catch by Snowden. Wow, when you come across the middle, you know Hines 47 is going to get you. This is a sprint weak side setup and a crossing pattern. See Hines 47? Look at him just zero in on the receiver. Bam! Boy, that is a big hit. You could hear it up here. Bam! Boy! How did he hold on to that? I don't know. Tyrone Hines. Philip Homer says he's an all star. He's been terrific. Malone outside, dragged down by Craig King as he gets to the 30 yard line. It's a pickup of about four on a first down. This is what you have to do, though, if you want to be Arkansas and you want to play against this great Tennessee team. You have to control the ball, and when you get opportunities, you have got to take advantage. They've got to come away with at least three points, hopefully seven on an opportunity like this. We played five minutes of the first quarter. Arkansas with the first serious scoring threat. The Razorbacks now have it inside the Tennessee 30 yard line on a second and four. Malone picks his way behind blocking and pushes it inside the 25. He just got behind all those big white just, shirts. I was he? just going to say it looked like a snowplow going down there, <laughs> and the orange shirts were in front of him. You talk about the big guys, Alderson and Burlesworth, Garrett, they're just driving them off the line. Look at this push. Just push, push, push. Look at those number of big white jerseys. 76 is Burlesworth, is 77. Alderson, 76. And of course, Garrett, 54, the center. Wow, they can't allow that to happen. Tennessee's got to step up. Basketball last week at 126 yards against Ole Miss. Off to a good start today. 29 yards already. Six minutes into the game. Dump pass to the tight end. Caught, knocked out of bounds is Mark Baker. Torrey Noel comes up from his strong safety spot to knock him out before he gets the first down. When you talk about a mismatch, this is a mismatch in size. Baker's about 250. Noel's about 180. Watch the hit Noel puts on right here. This is everything. Boom. This is a good hit. Safeties have to come sometimes and just give everything they have. When they hit, look at this. That's what you call just about everything you got. Very short gain on the play for the Razorbacks. Second down and around seven to go. It's an audible on the line. That's a blitz. And it looked like somebody jumped for Arkansas. Well, I think the time may have gone out on the clock. He was trying to hurry. That may be a delay. It's either a delay or someone jumped. I think they jumped. I think there were a couple yeah. of seconds left. That's not what Danny Ford likes. What I think he's saying is then in the line, a lot of times you'll hear those late cadence calls. You'll hear the, they change the defense and they yell out there, and a lot of times it can distract the offensive lineman and give him a false snap count. Well, that makes it tough. It's second down and 11 now for the Razorbacks. The ball pushed back to the 18 yard line. Works on the option to Malone. Gets a good block in the corner. Cuts it down to the 15 yard line. Now Wilson slides over to make the uh, stop on Oscar Malone. A pickup of seven. Gets a lot of it back. 
Well, this is a good block by Anthony Eubanks, number two, is the outside wide receiver. Watch him come up on Noel, number nine. He's just going to get in his way, and now that just brings him outside. Now it's just get down, get as far, as much yardage as you can. When you're in that safety position, you come up, you've got to turn that thing back inside. Razorbacks in a big third down here, deep in Tennessee territory. will keep it turn it up and did he get the first down a bit close Jason Parker comes up and makes the stop you know Dave this week I talked to Pete and he talked about in the past he was known as a quarterback with a linebacker mentality he said he got away from that a little bit and now he's trying to get it back yeah what you want to do is you want to have a tough quarterback especially when you have an option quarterback they don't have a lot of depth behind him he's just a sophomore so they need to have tough play but I think he's talking about the toughness of playing quarterback you can't show that you're hurt you can't show that you're rattled you've got to just have ice water in your veins. Racebacks now go with a fullback Jesse Cornelius on a first and ten at the Tennessee 11 Cornelius gets the handoff and gets a couple right up the middle. Tennessee shuts it off Bill Duff gets in there. We've seen the Razorbacks in the red zone so far this year 12 touchdowns and six field goals so of the 22 times they've been there they've scored 18 times. That's that's outstanding to get inside there and that's getting points that's getting touchdowns and field goals. That's what we said in this situation they have got to come away with points. They want to stay in this football game. They're doing exactly Bob what they need to do and that's keep the ball out of Peyton Manning's hand. Eighth play of the drive. Eubanks is the slot to the far side. He's the only guy in the Arkansas roster that has caught a touchdown pass so far this year. And he's man to man right now. Burks looking for him. Finds a seam and gets down to the five yard line. He's four yards away from a first down. Bill Duff and Tyrone Hines make the stop. Yeah, this is a designed quarterback draw. What the quarterback does is he takes the snap, drops back about three steps, sets up, and what his offensive linemen are supposed to do is just make a crack. He has to see it and zip up through it. And Burks does that very, very well. I'll tell you, Arkansas's got a good game plan today so far. They're utilizing a lot of different things, giving a lot of looks. Danny Ford and his team, they're prepared for this football game so far. Only had six offensive plays so far in the first quarter. The Razorbacks have had it the rest of the time. Burks firing into the end zone. Eubanks, did he catch it? Touchdown. Anthony Eubanks, his fifth score of the year, and the Razorbacks take a 6 0 lead. And it's a stunned Tennessee crowd and a happy Arkansas crowd. Eubanks bobbled this football. When you look at the number of receivers on Arkansas, Eubanks is the really the only threat. But this is a good drive. Again, watch it. Watch him bobble the ball. Right there, the ball comes out. He gets back, he comes down. He's in the end zone. He broke the plane. Boy, this is a startled crowd. Listen to him. Don Lonneret coming in to try the extra point. Wow, he yeah. splits it. And Arkansas, with 5.51 to go in the first quarter, takes a 7 0 lead here at Neyland Stadium. Back with the Arkansas kickoff after a word from your local SEC stations. And the fans that have made the trek from the Ozarks having a good time so far in the first quarter. The Razorbacks took advantage of a Jay Graham fumble, marched 48 yards for a score, and Tennessee trailing by a score of 7 0. Speaking of upsets, oh South Carolina trying to shock the Gators out of the swamp 6 0. Todd Lauderet to kick it off for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Here was Price. Drops back and gets it in his own five. Price looking for a hole. Still looking and gets it out across the 25 yard line. The Razorbacks take it down the field for the touchdown. David, an impressive drive. Yeah, and the time of possession is really important. They kept the ball away from Tennessee. You stop and think we're we're about five and a half minutes left in this game, and Tennessee has had six offensive plays. So there, Arkansas is doing exactly what they need to do: keep the football away from Peyton Manning and company. Four wideouts for Tennessee. New tailback Sean Bryson in there. Tennessee again has only run five offensive plays so far in this first quarter. That's their sixth pass, and it goes to Marcus Nash, who's knocked out of bounds after a pickup of close to nine yards. Well, this is a good play selection here. This is kind of a confidence one where you, what you do is you go out to the flat, run a little crossing pattern, just try to pick up some yardage, get some plays going. It's 
There's Marcus Nash, 38th reception of the season. They think he's going to be another in the long line of great receivers here at Tennessee. Here comes a Peyton Manning audible. And off right up the middle, and not much there. He did get the first down as the Razorbacks swarmed him to the ground. And there's that big nose guard, Melvin Bradley again, Boy, Dave. Bradley sticks around center. He comes around. He's, he's a quick guy in there. Just slides around real fast. Watch this. You're going to see him. 41. Comes in there, gets right inside. Boom, you see right there's a hit, there's a hit. Boy, they come down. They get to him quickly. Interesting. We talked about the shuffle of the offensive line. I noticed Brent Gibson is now in at guard, number 51. He was the center last week. You see him on the left of your screen. Gibson in playing. Right guard now for Tennessee on a third and short. And off Bryson, he didn't make it. If he did, it's going to be awfully close. I think he made it. <laughs> he got a good surge there right at the tail end. You have to run into that hole full speed. And I thought he got enough of a surge to get there. And the referee agrees with me. You're one for one today, bro. <laughs> Thanks, good. buddy. Again, big surge right here. Watch the ball. He kind of reaches out with the football. Just see him just jump and leap forward. He only had to make about the 36 yard line. He made almost the 37. So a first down for the Volunteers, their first of the day. 440 to go. First quarter, Arkansas 7, Tennessee nothing. Manning sack. Melvin Bradley. He fought through about three orange shirts to get to Manning, and that's his fifth sack of the season. Well, they took Brent Gibson, number 51, the center last week who moved the guard, and one of the defensive linemen picked him up and carried him right back into Manning's face. Watch 51 going right back into Manning. It may be Anderson. You see, Manning has no place to step up. Then he can, then Bradley comes around the outside on the twist, gets the tackle. You can't allow that much pressure in the quarterback's face. Manning with one hurry, now one sack, and the Volunteers go to the shotgun. Second and long. Manning pressured again, get rid of it, and hits his favorite receiver, Joey Kent, who spins out of bounds at midfield. We're actually they mark it now at the 48-yard line. Kent's first catch of the day. Boy, this is just great coordination between Peyton Manning and Joey Kent. He looks out there, he's under a lot of pressure. Look, coming right up the gut. Wham, he throws that football just like he knows exactly where Joey Kent is going to be. I don't see any any parts of those uh, hamstrings right there. You see the push off right there, twist around. I don't see a hamstring pull. He's not favoring it. That's got to be a big plus for Tennessee today. Chris Chalmers runs him out of bounds. Another first down for Tennessee. The Volunteers trying to get something going offensively. 3.50 to go in the first quarter in Neyland Stadium. Manning. Short drop, Price open, and knocked down after a gain of seven. Marcus Campbell there, right on top of Price, who pulls it in. I think Price has really been the surprise for this uh, Tennessee team this year. He's somebody who came in. I mean, you're playing behind. You got the likes of Marcus Nash and Joey Kent. You don't expect to get a lot of playing time behind those two type players. But Peerless Price has come in and really given this team some excitement. Remember that, re they remember that return he had that uh, reverse he went I think he went 50 some yards Bob in that South Carolina game that we did 54 to be exact Benji Schuler now into the game for Tennessee he's a slot man to the near side and Manning being pressured gets off across the middle it's complete McCullough now face mask penalty apparently Marcus Campbell dragged him down and dragged him down by the face mask. And how in the world did Peyton Manning ever get that ball off. One of the defensive linemen had a straight run at him. Nobody touched him. I mean it's a defensive lineman's dream. There's the personal foul that's going to go against Arkansas. It's going to be tacked on. But watch the Russ on the right side. 95 is going to get in there. That's David Sanders. Nobody touched him. That's obviously got to be a breakdown. Watch again, right side of your screen. Nobody touches him. Oh boy, that's as well as you can play quarterback. And there's the face max penalty, which will put the ball at the 22 yard line. You can't blitz any quicker than that in a quarterback's face. And Manning read it, delivered the football, backpedal, throwing, going backwards. That's why everybody considers him the best. Eighth play of the drive. Jay Graham back in at tailback now for Tennessee. 
Batting, looking and firing, and the ball is complete to Benji Schuler. Chris Chalmers over there, right on him, but Schuler hauls it in. And yes, that is the brother of the former great Tennessee quarterback, Heath Schuler. And Benji from Bryson City well, we has the sideline. Yeah, we had an argument there or something between a couple of linemen. I watched Trey Tig. They were locked up. They may have gotten face masks. But again, look at this good concentration by Schuler. Look the football in. He wasn't bad coverage either. Chalmers was right on top of him. But that was just an excellent throw. Great concentration by the receiver. Manning, who already owns 17 Tennessee passing marks, is off to a great start today. Six of nine for 73 yards. Here in the first quarter, look at Manning running the show in the huddle with a makeshift offensive line that cannot be comforting for a quarterback at this point of the season. Absolutely, not nine games into the season. No running backs now for Tennessee. Five wide receivers. First and goal. And a whistle. I don't know what this one was. I thought for a minute somebody might have jumped into the neutral zone, but. A lot of times in that situation, the clock's ticking down. You're trying to change the play. Let's see if we can find out. Rob Gilbert with the call. Timeout, Arkansas. Well, they jumped into that no back, and so Miles Aldridge, the defensive coordinator, said, let's think about this. 7-0, Arkansas, but the volunteers on the move. Bob, I was watching Peyton Manning on a couple plays back when he got that big rush on him. And he may have hurt his leg when he came up there. You see him kind of limping. You see that there, right there. You see him again lifting up that right ankle. He may have, in fact, twisted his ankle on the play before that. But that rollout action showed that he may have a twisted ankle. First and goal, Tennessee. Manning going to work. Quick hit to the middle. Touchdown. Marcus Nash. Seven of ten now in this first quarter, and Marcus Nash hauls in his third touchdown of the season. Well, he may have hurt his ankle, but he didn't hurt that golden arm. He throws a strike in there on that crossing pattern to Nash, and his offensive line picked up a blitz, so they gave him a lot of time. You have to credit that offensive line. They've been they've been under a lot of pressure, but they gave him time. Jeff Hall to tie it. And he does so. 2.27 to go in the first quarter. And Tennessee has tied it up at 7-7 against the Razorbacks on the drive. Peyton Manning, 6 of 6 for 61 yards. Well, that's what you need. That's vintage Peyton Manning. Uh, Arkansas had just taken advantage of an opportunity. They drove the length of the field. Manning takes them right back, puts plays together. And again, this is just a wonderful pass under pressure. Watch the blitz up the middle. You see 44 55. That's a blitz. Outside blitz. And Manning just steps back there. Boom, just throws that in pattern just right on the on post. And again, this is him. Vintage Manning. Look at him. Looking right at his receiver. Picks him right up. Boom. You either get, if you're going to live with that blitz, you may die with that blitz. They're interesting, too, on the six passes. All to different receivers. Yeah, he spreads the ball out as well as any quarterback I've seen. You know, we look across the field at Pete Burks. Once you get past Anthony Eubanks with 47, 42 catches coming into this game, you have nobody else in double digits. Manning, everybody gets the football. Scoring drive, nine plays, 74 yards. It took 324. And we're tied up at seven on Chris Hogue. Now we'll kick things off. He's been bothered by a very sore ankle and has kind of played through it. Now he's got to put the ball back up on the team. Well, Dave, one thing Tennessee was concerned about, making sure the crowd was in this game. Arkansas took him out. Maybe that touchdown drive got him back in it a yeah, little I bit. I think it will. I think it does. And I, like I said, that's exactly what you have to do. When you're playing a team that's playing on emotion like Arkansas is after that big win last week, you've got to take that emotion away from them. Line drive kick. That'll bounce, and Loudermilk will pick it up. It's knocked down by his own teammate. Stomping around, he thought he had a chance to go a long way, and his own teammate Eddie Mosley was there to knock him to the turf. That was quite a that was quite a hit. Here you see the Tennessee drive, Marcus Nash and the touchdown catch. Very impressive, 74 yards. Tennessee efficient in that drive. The Volunteers still trying to make adjustments. That offensive line, Philip Fulmer talking to his kickoff man. They made a change last week in the Ole Miss game. Philip Fulmer wasn't very pleased with both, but again, he's playing with that very sore ankle. Handoff up the middle. 
And Chakuma's into the game for the first time. Chris Kachuma, who is the freshman out of Montgomery, Alabama. He is a terrific running back oh. and he's got a lot of speed. Boy, if you get him out in the secondary, he has he has what they say is world class track speed. They want to get him in the secondary. They want to use him in the pass patterns, dump the football off, get him matched up one on one with a backer, and see if he can beat him. He has got outstanding 40 yard dash time. Picked up about seven yards right there. Chris Chakuma. Gonna go to him again. Breaks the seam. Looks for a hole. Tori Noel finally drops him, but not before he picks up a first down. Peyton Manning is down. They've been looking at that ankle of his. They might have retaped it over there. Yeah, now he seems to be going to the side. He may be going out. Uh, I see him going through the fence. They may be taking him back into the locker room to retape that. If they take it all the way off and put it right back on the skin, I wonder if it might be a knee rather than an ankle. Just twisted it a little bit. Yeah. Chakuma. And gets across the 46 yard line. Where they took him is the old locker room, uh, which they have a little medical unit set up over there. And uh, where Tennessee dresses now is in the north end zone. Chakuma. A little bit slow getting up after Al Wilson pinned him. Let Again, there's that locker room that you're talking about, Bob, underneath, I guess, the old yes. stands. Uh -huh. the that's, old. Boy, that's got to be a real, I mean, everybody here's got to be holding their breath because Peyton Manning has been invincible. He's been where they have focused the entire offense around him. Second and long for Arkansas. Ball up their own 46-yard line in a tie game, seven all. Bill Duff. Duff drags him down after a pickup of about two. He's not waiting a long time now. He's not hesitant at all. Let's go down to Dave Baker with an update we think on Peyton Manning. Dave? All right, thanks so much, Bob. We're here with uh, Dr. Bill Yeomans, uh, the orthopedic surgeon for the Vols. What's up with Peyton? He's got a uh, grade two, one to two sprain in his medial ligament. We're going to put him in a brace and see if he can move. Right knee, they're good, just going to try it, but it doesn't look like anything serious right now. You're going to check. Yeah, he's, he, he looks like nothing more than that right now. Okay, thanks, Dr. Yeomans. They're going to put the brace on Bob and get him back out here. Manning has never really been hurt since he's been at Tennessee. And now the first quarter comes to a close. It's been a good one. Arkansas had a scoring drive, so did Tennessee. We're tied at seven as we head to the second at Neyland Stadium. Getting set to start the second quarter, 7-7. The concern on the Tennessee sideline is Peyton Manning as he talks to the gentleman on the right in the sunglasses, Bill Yeomans, the team orthopedic surgeon, about whether he can continue. Burks back to throw. Got a man. His favorite receiver, Eubanks. That's for a first down as they move into Tennessee territory to the 41. Eubanks now is fifth all time on the Arkansas reception list and he speaking of fifth he caught his fifth touchdown pass of the season that's the Arkansas score he's been a dandy receiver oh he has been when you look at their receiving and I, I thought when I was doing my charts I thought I made a mistake because he has 42 passes and nobody else has double figures so the first quarter stats Kuma, good move inside the 30 and knocked out of bounds Tyrone Hines shoves him out but he picks up a first down as he gains six. Oh, what a nice dip there against Raymond Austin, the corner coming up the tack. Chakuma just kind of dips inside. Watch, 22. He's going to get the ball. He's going to dip right here now, get outside. Now watch the way he sets up Raymond Austin, 28. He just bites on that, that inside move, and now he's down the sideline. That's an outstanding move. I said six, I meant 15. And he's already got 38 yards rushing. So the Razorbacks doing it on the ground. Tennessee trying to do it through the air. And Chakuma again, this time smack down. You heard the big thump. That was Craig King in the middle. I'll tell you what, these Tennessee linebackers will hit you. Oh, they certainly will. I'll tell you, I have a lot of respect for them. Whether it's King or Jester, they played well. Wilson, of course, Hines in the middle. He's the middle man. He's the one that controls that middle, just roams in there. You look at him, he's the outstanding tackler up there, number one tackler, big hits, two interceptions. Hines just slides. 78 hits coming into today's game to lead Tennessee in tackles. Also a couple of interceptions. Second and long for the Razorbacks. Blitz, Noel, got there and forced Burks to throw quick. 
That puts the strong safety. Yeah, that's interesting. They brought him up on the outside of the line and blitzed him. They put a lot of pressure on the young quarterback, Pete Burks. They come on the outside. Watch number nine. He's going to get pressure. See, nobody touches him from the outside. You see the tackle kind of reaching out for him there, just trying to get an arm on him. That's Carlos Showers. He's just trying to wave at him. That's not his man. They're electing to put pressure on Pete Burks. They don't want him standing back, finding one of his wide receivers. Well, the official word for the Tennessee bench is that Peyton Manning will return. But he'll have a brace on. Burks on the option. Cuts it up. Gets to the 20. Gets to the 15, and that's a first down. Tory Noel saved a touchdown. Burks showed those quick feet. Oh, did he ever? He was almost caught behind the line of scrimmage. He made a great read right here, and he drunk just kind of jumped up inside. Watch coming down the line. You've got to read that outside man. Is he taking the pitch? He is. He cuts it inside. Now he breaks the tackle there, too. There's another one trying to get a hand on him. If they don't get him right there, again, watch this good read there. Cuts it back up inside, breaks a couple tackles, and they've got a first down. Razorbacks on the move. Chakuma drags a couple of Tennessee players with him as he gets down close to the 10 yard line. Boy, the longer Arkansas can play with this emotion, the better they will be. They, they swelled that emotion, swelled last week with their first SEC win as we see Chakuma get up, and he's limping a little bit. But Danny Ford has rallied his team, and they're playing with that same emotion that they had last week. Tennessee has got to take that away from them. 11th play of the drive. Boy, they are keeping the ball away from Tennessee. Is this Danny Ford football this right This is here? Danny Ford football. Just line it up. Goes nose to nose, jaw to jaw, and go at him. Razorbacks trying to take the lead, second down. Chakuma nothing this time. Billy Ratliff runs him down and throws him to the ground. Ratliff is a scary sight on the football field. He's 6'3". They list him at 265. He runs like a tailback. Boy, he does. You see the number he wears. He's going to wear number 40. Watch Ratliff come strong side, break through, gets a good play right here. He's kind of a mix. They like him play tackle, but they say, well, you know, he can play in because he has that great speed, but we like him at tackle. But when you wear number 40, you think, I'm, I was a linebacker at one time. Third down long. Lee Burks looking. He's got a little seam again. Puts a move on, great move down to the four-yard line, out of bounds, and that's a first down. What a move by Burks. On Craig King, he gave him a little play fake action, pump action, and King, number 44, jumped up in the air to block the pass. Watch him, he's going to be the outside backer on the left side. When Burks comes out, this left side, strong side, watch him right here give a little pump fake. And you see the up in the air, look at that. Craig King says, oh, no, and allows Burks to go for the first down. 13 yards on the scamper by Pete Burks and the Razorbacks in business. First and goal at the three, and they go into the wishbone. And a two, maybe. Bob, this is a time when you don't fool around. You just take off and drive straight ahead. This is just smash mouth football, big man on big man. You got to love it if you're an offensive defensive lineman right now. There may be somebody hurt. I just looked down in that pile. A couple of players were pointing or else they're all just tangled up. There are about 30 guys in that oh, pile boy, up there. there were. That was like a bad car wreck right there. <laughs> Big gesture down there along with Jonathan Brown. You see the offensive line for Arkansas. They've got an injury problem too as well. Russ Brown, their left guard, has been bothered by a bad back. He's not in there right now. Wishbone again. Oscar Malone. Close, didn't get in. They say no, no, no. Well, I saw that official come in first time and put his hands up, but then all of a sudden he came in and overruled himself and pointed to the ground. Again, they go behind Burlesworth, Alderson, 76-77. Just tough football. Look where he comes down. See the official now. He's going to come in, and he starts to signal yes, and then all of a sudden he puts his hand down and says, no, no, no. It's right there on the ground on about the one-inch line. Now, I wonder if his body was in and maybe the ball wasn't. Yeah. I think his head may have penetrated the plane. Malone, Chakuma, the running backs in the wishbone. Third down. Burke's going to take it himself in. Touchdown. The Razorbacks take the lead, 13 to seven. 
Boy, what a crowd in the middle. You talk about 22 players in about a five-yard area. They were squished in there. You knew what it was going to be. You knew Burks was going to carry the football. You knew it was going to be a quarterback sneak, and Arkansas is able to drive them back into the end zone. Todd Lunaret trying to give the Razorbacks a 14-7 lead. Just that. So the Razorbacks have put together two impressive drives against Tennessee's defense. Pete Burks puts them in front, 14-7 with 10-22 to go here in Knoxville. Arkansas out slugging Tennessee right now. The Razorbacks lead at 14-7. Bob Kessling, Dave Rowe, and Dave Baker with you. Over 100,000 at Neyland Stadium today. A little bit quiet right now, Dave. Oh, they're shocked. There's, there's 100,000 shocked. Nobody's standing up. Everybody's sitting down. Todd Lotteret kicks it. Pins Peerless Price over in the corner. Breaks one tackle. Gets out across the 20. And now let's see who comes in for Tennessee at quarterback. Let's go down to Dave Baker. Bob, you know, maybe one reason for that shock was the fact that Peyton Manning did go to the locker room. Here's the brace that Manning has been fitted with. He's got a sprain of his medial collateral ligament. That's the inside of the knee. So what they do, they tape this brace on the outside to prevent the knee from going back inside again. Peyton was taking snaps out on the sideline. He said he was fine. He was dropping back, said everything was okay, but you'll be able to see he's limping noticeably. Yeah, Dave, I was going to say he's a little gimpy as he comes back out. 10-15 to go. First in the second quarter, you see the time of possession. Arkansas has been grinding it out. That's incredible. 15 minutes to four. That's not what Tennessee wanted. Manning has said before he doesn't like the shotgun, but he's in it right now. Dumps it off, complete. As to his running back, Sean Bryce and Mark Smith finally holds him up. And they swing him to the ground as again that nose guard comes over. Melvin Bradley cleans it up. Yeah, he's all over the field. But it's interesting that they should go, that they should go from the shotgun. What they're saying is they want him to get that knee warm. They don't want him to have to do that five-step five step drop where he takes the football and has to run back and set up. So what you do is you go from the shotgun where he's sitting about six, seven yards deep on the pass plays. Second down. Five yards to go. Manning comes back under Trey Team the center. And a quick out complete to Joey Kent. Now he breaks a tackle, then he's knocked out of bounds. Broke the first one, but not the second one as Arkansas came up with a nice play from the safety, Jeremy Flowers. You know, it's interesting, Dave. Trey Teague, who they moved to center, is actually Peyton's roommate. So he's talking about he was a little concerned maybe about the snap from center. And we asked him about that. He said, well, not really. He said, uh, basically, we had a chance since he's my roommate. Thursday night we're in Seinfeld during the commercials we got up took snaps right there in the apartment well they're good roommates they're good friends and uh, that's nice to see they're best Tick. friends so they yeah. think Teague's gonna be a great yeah. player oh yeah here's yeah. the snap slings it out to Marcus Nash short of the first down knocked out of bounds at the 40 yard line Dave, what are the problems that a quarterback has with the receiver? Well, two things. First of all, it's the snap. You have to move your hands where that quarter, where that center feels comfortable. So that's number one. Secondly, the snap is different on each quarterback receives the snap differently from each center. The third thing is that I think it's a least he's, he's got to make sure he gets the football. So it can disrupt a little bit the timing of the quarterback dropping back for pass patterns and of course giving the football off. You see the brace on Manning on that right knee as he takes the snap from his roofing. Trying to get outside is Jay Gray. Stiff arms to midfield and out of bounds. Mark Smith shoves him out. Not before Graham picks up a first down. A lot of questions this year coming in for Jay Graham. Was he going to have as outstanding a year as last year? I think he's the same type of running back, but of course the offensive line is so different. I mean, you're talking about five guys that graduate, and then you lose Jarvis Rito. But this is Jay Graham. Get to the outside. You see the ball in the right hand on the on the sideline side, so he's protecting the football. But I know in Jay Graham's heart right now and in his mind, he's saying, I need to make up for that fumble. Tennessee trailing 14-7, ball at midfield. Nine minutes to go before halftime. Manning. Makes he's in trouble. He's trying to run his way out. Lobs the ball, and it's going to be incomplete. Peyton Manning with a second and long. Quick drop. Got his man out there. Peerless Price. Pick up of about five yards. The Razorbacks swarm him and drop him. 
When Price is such a player, you have to respect that speed. What he does, he just drives the corner off, curls up. Now you're hoping he gets a second there to make that little move and go downfield. But he's an outstanding receiver with great speed, good concentration, and they just don't drop Peyton Manning thrown balls. There's Peerless Price and Annie McCullough, who are teammates in high school at Dayton Meadowdale. Third down for Manning. Myers got his man. I think he got a first down to Marcus Nash for the 38 yard line. When Manning got hit that time. He saw him go down and all the all the offensive linemen turned around and looked at him. But he pops right back up and that's what you want your quarterback to do. Stay in there to the last second. Just deliver that strike. And he does. He throws a nice strike here. This is just a curl drive off curl pattern. You see good timing right there. And as I said they just do not drop. Now watch the backside hit. Bam down he goes and all the offensive linemen turn around and look at him. Now the Arkansas Razorbacks have asked for a timeout. That is their second timeout in this first half. Tennessee on the move with the Volunteers trail 14 7. We'll be back to Neyland Stadium in just a moment. The Hog Hat <laughs> and amongst the Big Orange. He's struggling but doing all right so far. The Razorbacks lead 14 7. First and 10 Tennessee at the Arkansas 40. Manning. Gets hit as he throws, but he gets his man down to the 30 yard line. And Manning is down still. I'll tell you, that time, he, again, he may be hurt. Because he's looking, he got up stiff leg at that time, Bob. He's not bending that knee well, but he is under a lot of pressure. You don't see, look at, there's the wrap on the knee. Now, the, the wrap is just the brace, is a brace that slides on the side. Now, watch the tail end of this, because he is just getting unbelievable penetration there by Arkansas. And again, he goes down under pressure. We well, just don't see that kind of pressure on Peyton Manning. C.J. McLean is the one. Tennessee going for second and short. Melvin Bradley there to try and stuff the run. Jay Graham though got close to the first down. Well, Tennessee has run the ball six times. They've thrown it 17 times. As you see the Tennessee play selection. Arkansas has rushed it 25 times and passed it seven. So contrasting styles today. Yeah, but when your quarterback gets hurt, it puts a lot of pressure on you because you want to take the pressure off your quarterback when he gets hurt. You want to take it off with the run, but they're not able to do that. Third and one. And did Tennessee get it? That has been a problem in the last couple of weeks, these third and shorts. First and ten, Tennessee. 29 yard line. There's Manning putting up good numbers again today, but his team is still trailing by a touchdown. Comes an audible on the line. Manning. Looking now fires across the middle. Peerless Price is there. Spun down at the 15. Manning buying a little time. And he gets a 14 yard completion to Price, and Jeremy Flowers spins him down. Boy, does he feel the pressure too? Watch the pressure right up the gut. Steps to his left a little bit now. Comes up in the pressure, and he knows the pressure's coming from the backside and unleashes that football. He's got great vision. He's fearless in the pocket. He's got all the things that you want out of a quarterback, but he has a hobbled knee. Marcus Campbell made the stop for Arkansas. Now Tennessee has another first down. The ball at the Arkansas 15. Tennessee looking for a tying touchdown here in the second quarter. Jay Graham. The count. Look at the speed. Touchdown. Fourteen yards. Jay Graham scores, and Tennessee is within a point. Well, that'll make up for a fumble. That's the kind of player that Jay Graham is. Knew he fumbled early, gave Arkansas a score, and he has just taken it upon himself to come back with this uh, Tennessee team. That was an outstanding run. You wait to see the replay on that. That play was designed to go in what we used to call the six hole, off tackle on the strong side. He saw it, he got blocked, he made it all the way back around the weak side for the touchdown. Jeff Hall. Boots it right through and ties the game at 14 all with 5.33 to go in the first quarter. Jay Graham scores his eighth rushing touchdown to tie it up here at Neyland Stadium. 
Bob, this is an amazing play right here. Watch Jay Graham start strong side. Now, right there, you see the break back inside. Now he goes all the way back against the grain to the outside on a weak side play. That is an outstanding play by Jay Graham. Sprinter speed pays off, and Graham scores. Now, good hit. That's on Laddermilk. Gets knocked down by Eric Westmoreland. 529, the Razorbacks start deep in their own territory. Jester just leveled him. You talk about leveling. Watch number 45 when he comes in there. He got bumped a little bit this week. Craig King is going to start in his place. Watch him right at your screen. He reads it. Now watch this. Fills and bam. Boy, that's a deep cleater. That's right in the old ear hole right there. <laughs> it sure it? is. I mean to tell you, boy, that was a big one. Now there may be a foul after the, there may be a dead ball foul. Oh. Wow, while we were watching that, there was a play, a dead ball after the play. I didn't even see what happened, and that's the first time we've heard this crowd boo because uh, it's going to give, a, it's going to negate a great play by Jester and give him a first down out near the, about the 36, 37 yard line. Didn't really see where the penalty no, was. Did not. I don't know whether it was, it wouldn't be taunting because that'd be an unsportsmanlike conduct. No, it was personal foul. Nothing there up the middle. Just trying to push him. And Tennessee would not give that time. Over 103,000 at Neyland Stadium today watching the Razorbacks and Tennessee battle in a 14 all time. Florida has come from six down now to lead South Carolina 21 to six. Here's the reverse, and they set it up. One man to beat, and they can't do it. Good Tennessee defense. Jester again as he spins. Hubert Lottermuth to the turf. If he doesn't get him, he goes oh, all the way. If Jester doesn't come up on this play, he's got backside containment on the on the reverse. If he doesn't make this play, you're going to hear the crowd just gasp. Watch this. On the run, it's an option reverse. You flip it up. Now, there's one guy to beat. 44. Excuse me, 45. That's Jester. He just swipes at him and gets him down. Again, watch this from the play. All the way back against the grain, and you see number 45 is the only guy out there to beat. Arkansas, six of eight today on third down conversions. Much better than their seasonal average. Burke, penalty flags down. Two of them now. Burke stopped short of the first down by Jason Parker, and I will pick up the penalty. There's one in the backfield, one at the line of scrimmage. Well, I think the first one I saw, I saw one of the offensive linemen flinch when one of the defensive linemen jumped in. The second one is called. That's a hold, almost definitely. We'll have to sort this out a little bit. Referees are keeping busy today. Ron Gilbert on the call. Outside, on the defense, holding on the offense, 75, down. We just do it again. <laughs> well, I saw the flinch. The defensive lineman jump into the neutral zone, and that's so that was the offside. Then, whenever you see that that line, just throw that flag in there. You can forget it. It's almost always holding. You talk about Danny Ford right there. His team lost to SMU, then they lost to Alabama to start this season. And they've had some ups and downs, but he's done a nice job of rallying the troops here. Well, he really hasn't. He's got a very, very young team. They have an incredibly young team. 11 freshmen and sophomores starting today for Arkansas. Nothing there. Buck Buxton. Nice play on Oscar Malone. Nothing going on the draw. Arkansas. Deciding not to risk it there goes to the safe play and Tennessee snuffed it out. Well, that's exactly what you want to do if you're a Tennessee. You wanted to stop the football, get it back to Manning and company, let their offense take over. This is a draw. You try to turn him, and Buxton doesn't turn. He plays right into the hole, just plays it very, very well. Now, if you're Tennessee, you've got to take advantage of this. Arkansas did not want to give the ball three and out. Tennessee now calls a timeout to stop the clock. It's down to 246 here in the second quarter. You know, you talk about the injury today now to Billy Ratliff. You lose Leonard Little, Billy Ratliff, Billy Barron's out. That's three defensive linemen off your 2D. Well, that's tough. That's really tough to recover. Really, really hard. And Ratliff left here with a knee injury. And when they take you off in a cart, you don't come back. You don't come back to play. There's Philip Fulmer. You know, I think I think he's done an outstanding job this week. I mean, you just can't believe, Bob. You know, you're you, you follow football a lot. How devastating a loss like that is to an unranked team. I mean, they're the they're the prohibitive favorites. They go in there and they get crushed, and and I mean, their emotions are shattered. And he just took this team and refocused it on Arkansas. And he admitted it was a devastating loss. 
and it's one of the toughest loss he has ever had as a head coach and I'm sure one of the toughest losses in Tennessee history but he said the team went back to work all you can do you can't hope about it just got to get back to work and try and get better and as he said climb back up the mountain where they were that's exactly right Matt Waits steps in two punts today he's had a 52 yarder so far this year wind is really not a factor at all if anything it's in his face but it does swirl in this double deck bowl stadium. one fair back inside his 20 looking for help breaks a couple tackles but there are about eight Razorbacks down there and they finally pin him. Arkansas gets great coverage that time on the 49 yard punt down covering Kennedy for Arkansas and also down there Cole and number 42 at the bottom of the pile he's going to hold a lot of records before he leaves here he's already the total offensive leader this year in the Southeastern Conference little flip pass Jermaine Copeland little shake outside pinned as he gets to the corner by Flowers and Copeland picks up about seven Copeland they call him slash outstanding basketball player in high school at Harriman as well as an all state football performer led him to the state championship game he might be the backup quarterback he might be a wide receiver he could play free safety he might be the quarterback next year yes, if Manning leaves he certainly might be and I don't I don't want to see Peyton Manning leave I think he's got he's got the chance to become one of the great one of the greatest college quarterbacks I'd like to see him stay Manning drops back looks fires the out and overshoots peerless price had to get rid of it quick again a little pressure from the Razorbacks Marcus Campbell was back defending for Arkansas now Manning again faces a third down and long and it's really interesting the defensive scheme that Arkansas has put against Manning they're trying to blitz him they're covering him short they know if they don't get there with the blitz and they don't get pressure on Manning that they can get beaten real easy on those one on one deep patterns but they're so relying on that pressure to get to Manning that they're only covering about eight, ten yards off the line of scrimmage. So Tennessee three of four, third down conversions. Manning has hit 14 of his last 16 passes. Now he needs about five yards here on third down. Too high, out of bounds. Jermaine Copeland went up high for it, didn't come down with it. You know, Dave, I haven't seen Joey Kent much lately. No. I wonder if he's still bothered by that hamstring and knee problem, but he wasn't in there that time. No, he certainly wasn't. And you want that's the kind of player that you want in there on that third down. That was third in about four yards. Arkansas again putting pressure on. They want to get this football back. They want to see if they can get that offense, go into the halftime with that momentum. But I'm telling you, Bob, I, I've seen a lot of football, but I've never seen 100,000 people this quiet. Larry Pena, low line drive. Eubanks will let it skip. And it pretty much like a seven iron just stops right there, doesn't roll. And so Arkansas will take it at the market at the 31. A 40 yard punt by Larry Pena. One running back behind Pete Burks. And he'll take it. Uh, yeah, that's Chakuma. Straight up the middle. Tyrone Hines puts him down. Boy, Hines has been active again today. He's all over the field. Chakuma trying to get in that secondary. If he breaks in that secondary, there's very few people can catch him with that speed. But interesting that Arkansas is just allowing the clock to tick down. We're under two minutes. He may be hurt himself, Chakuma. I think he's tying a shoe right there. But I think he <laughs> yeah, is, that's what he was. He is banged up. His shoe's hurt. He's got 48 yards already and nine carries. He goes for 50 here. He'll lose a couple. Good stick by Tori Noel. Dropped him for about a two yard loss and now Arkansas again has a third down and about four yards to go. Well for, for Arkansas it's a huge just a lift to go in tied 14 to 14 so they're not in any hurry. Burks is not the great passing quarterback that uh, would take you down the field like a Manning would. They've got to rely on a little bit different but uh, again just allowing the clock to tick down. Maybe if they get a big play they may use timeouts but not necessarily. Do they call timeout? 49 seconds left. They got one timeout left. Yeah, well, the clock moves. The clock stops, I should say, when they move the chains. But Arkansas just doesn't seem to be in any hurry. That's really surprising to me. Jester makes the stop. And it's a first down for the Razorbacks. Ball to the 42. Clock ticks down to 40 seconds. 
Well, if Danny Ford goes by his past script, he's not going to do anything here to give Tennessee a chance to score points. Safe plays, throws that one a little bit behind. He was pressured, but Snowden couldn't reach back and grab it. And the clock stops with 27 seconds left to go. Terry Fair covering Michael Snowden. Well, don't you know that Anthony Eubanks in this situation is going to garner a lot of attention? Is it really their, their deep threat? They've got a tight end, Mark Baker, who runs well and gets downfield, but they've only gone to him one time this season. Snowden coming into this game only had seven receptions. You look at Eubanks, and like you said, he's got more catches than all the rest of them. Puma, good, strong hit again by Tyrone Hines. We've said his name a lot in the first half. Clock ticks under 20 seconds now. We'll see if the Razorbacks run another play. See, if I'm Tennessee, I might even use one of my timeouts. They can punt the football, but they're content just to go in 14-14. I think it's a shocked Tennessee crowd, shocked Tennessee team. Clock ticks down. Pete Perks has helped the Arkansas Razorbacks play Tennessee to a standstill in the first half. Philip Fulmer heading to the locker room, and his team is tied with the Razorbacks at 14-all. Second half ready to go. Arkansas, Tennessee tied up. Arkansas won the opening toss, took the ball. They will kick off to start the second half. Bob Kessling, Dave Rowe, Dave Baker with you with a call here from Neyland Stadium. As again, the Razorbacks booted high to Mark Levine, who will back up at his own eight yard line. Now start forward. Makes one tackle, gets out to the 30, spins his way to the 31. Good hard running. And now Peyton Manning will see how his knee is after. The halftime. Yeah, it's really tough on a quarterback when you come out and you've been you've been kind of like sitting there and you've got you tightened up a little bit. Let's watch that knee. You see the hobble right there on it, and a different looks like a different type of a brace on that right knee. You see how he's favoring it, and boy, it was not a good halftime because they found out that their good defensive tackle Ratliff has got a uh, an ACL torn ACL, so he's not coming back either. It's an Anderson brace they have on. Peyton Manning. It's a little bigger than the one they had on before. The other one just basically keep the knee from wiggling. Much. There's Jay Grant speaking of wiggle. Getting outside across the 40. And that's close to a first down. And Bob, it's really good to see Jay Graham run with a little bit of authority. He's been under a lot of criticism this year. You remember last year it was over 1,000 yards. Coming into this game, he only had 568. So again, he just has not played like he did last year. Yeah, you see the stats after eight games on the year last year. Jay Graham finished up with 1438. And of course, the offensive line woes have had part of that. The problem we hadn't had as many holes to run through this year. Now he's going outside a little bit more. And a short gain that time, knocked down as Flowers again comes up, along with Mark Smith, who slides over from his linebacking spot. Boy, he's such a quality kid, too. Jay Graham has taken a lot of the pressure. I want to tell you something. Tennessee, I know Arkansas has got some great athletes, but in talking yesterday with Joey Kent, and you see the, the demeanor of Joey Kent, and then, of course, Peyton Manning coming up, and then Jay Graham, they've got just some outstanding personalities. I mean, they're just great kids. Last year against the Razorbacks, Jay Graham had a big day, 130 yards and three touchdowns. He has one today as Manning goes back in the shotgun. Out pattern to Nash, and he's going to be knocked short of the first down on a good hit. And that secondary, David Barrett comes up along with Chris Chalmers to make sure Nash doesn't get to that first down marker. Well, that was a nice throw. You know, it's interesting. I don't see, I don't think I see Joey Kent out there. No, he's not. He didn't. He's played. He's only caught two balls. He hurt his knee last week against Memphis, and he's been bothered with a hamstring problem since Alabama. But I have not seen him on the field very much. I think he just came in on this play. I think I just saw him come in on this play. Quick slant. Nash. Check that. It's Andy McCullough. McCullough gets the catch, and that's going to be depends on when they mark it. McCullough thinks he got it. Well, it's going to be close. He had to make about the 48-yard line, 47-48 yard line. He just saw Joey Kent with the McCullough, so he is back on the field. They're going to measure it. Well, Joey Kent's had an incredible career here at Tennessee. Remember, he had over a thousand yards, I think, in 1995, and they just can't afford. You can't afford to take those kind of players out of this lineup. 
Joy didn't practice much this week, and he said it's been tight. The hamstring, he's learned to play with that. It's the knee that really uh, has bothered him. That's why he stayed off it most of the week. And everybody will tell you, you want to stay healthy. You want to stay healthy late in the season. And the, the, the injury last week broke a string. Kenneth had eight straight games where he caught over 100 yards in receiving, and that was snapped last week, but he didn't play. Back to the shotgun for Manning on a first down in Arkansas territory. Here comes an audible. There's a little fade pattern, and it's a great catch. Fearless Price down on the 21 yard line. Marcus Campbell was there. Price, he looked like a center fielder just Boy. trying to run under that ball. Boy, he did. That was a nice call by Manning, who was going to go into shotgun. He saw the defense, read the defense, and just throws it high. Now, this just allows the receiver to catch the football. You see, it's away from him, gets that foot down in bounds. That's an outstanding call by Peyton Manning. 27 yards on there. Also, Jay Graham threw a nice block, giving Manning some protection time. And there's Peerless Price, who's emerging as another go to receiver in this Tennessee attack. Graham goes right behind Trey Tigg down to the 13 yard line. Tigg walled off about three guys that time. He surely did. He came off the line, walled off that middle linebacker, got the good block in there, and it allowed Graham just to come flying off the football. And Graham is running with a, just a different vengeance. You just see that fumble that he had resulted in that Arkansas early touchdown. And in this, and since that fumble, he has run. He's a much different runner. He's running with, like he did last year, with a lot more authority. Tennessee has marched it right down the field while they mark it. We'd also like to congratulate one of our officials today Robert Towns the lineman retiring after 30 years of officiating in college football he's been one of the best in the SEC and we appreciate his efforts and again today is his final game that's a lot of whistle blowing well that sure is I bet he's throwing enough flags to be Memorial Day the other the fade to the other side too long that time uh, Jermaine Copeland and a flag is down. Well, that was pass interference all the way. The defensive corner had his hand on the wide receiver on Copeland, just kept him from going downfield. There was no doubt about that. And there's Robert Towns right there. He's the guy who dropped the flag. Robert said, This may be my last day, but I'm going to throw a flag. Give my money's worth. <laughs> now, Ron Gilbert. Now they're going to take it. Ooh. You know what that call is? That's the call where it's not an uncatchable ball. The ball was thrown so deep over his head. But I disagree with that call. I've never liked that call when you wave it off on defensive interference. It's going to be on the left of your screen. Watch the defender have his hand. You see the hand right there? Now they're saying the ball was uncatchable because it was so far out of bounds. But a big difference is that receiver getting around the cornerback and getting downfield. David Barrett was on the defense. Now Tennessee with the old bugaboo. This third and short. Manning getting everybody in position. Shotgun. Manning looking, fires, out pattern, Man, flag in the end zone. I wonder if that might have been a pick on Tennessee. I, I think it was a pick on Tennessee. A pick is just like a basketball pick where one player picks off the coverage team, and that's the way the flag looked. Price was in the end zone. No, it's on Arkansas. No, it is on Tennessee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that is, that's an offensive pick. Watch right here. Now he comes, he picks off the defensive player. I guess they say yeah. he picked off Campbell, but yeah. I thought it was a little bit more obvious than that. That wasn't very obvious on that call. Well, that moves it. It gets the crowd stirred a little bit. That moves it what from the 12 all yeah. the way back out to close to the 25. Philip Fulmer trying to get an explanation. I think he's complaining about the pass interference penalty. Yeah. I see. I didn't see the pick. The pick is like a basketball pick where you actually make contact with him and you don't allow him. You pick him off. But I didn't see that kind of contact. Tie game, 14 all. Tennessee's had the ball the whole third quarter so far, but needing a third down conversion. Manning pressured and intercepted. Mark Smith picks it off for the Razorbacks and he's still moving. Finally, Joey Kent slings him down. But a big play by their big play performer. Mark Smith picks it off and the Razorbacks stop Tennessee on their first possession. We're still tied. Razorbacks get the ball for the first time this half. Peyton Manning intercepted for the 10th time this season gives the ball back to Arkansas. Pete Burks his first snap 
second half as the Razorbacks take it over at their own 32. Burks pressure guns it way short looking for his wide receiver Eubanks and now the interception of Manning. Well he's under a lot of pressure by Melvin Bradley number 41 from the outside and he just throws it. Look at the, the trajectory. It was hit wasn't it. Yeah the ball the trajectory of the ball was off. It looked as if Bradley may have just kind of touched his arm. Well I'll tell you one thing they may think about putting Mark Smith Mark Smith at running back. Well let's see if he touches his arm right. No, the ball may have slipped out of his hands or else he couldn't come through but the trajectory of the ball was terrible. Manning had 10 interceptions in his first two years at Tennessee. He has 10 this year. Now 20 for his career. Malone dodges two orange shirts and gets across the 35. Out to the 37. Jason Parker made the stop after Ron Green hitting first in the backfield. I'll tell you one thing, this has been an interesting football game because really Arkansas coming in here, the only thing they had going for them was momentum. That's all they had, that last week's win against uh, Ole Miss. But they have really, I bet their locker room was an exciting place to be at halftime. Burks has had some time to operate. Tennessee just hadn't gotten to him. Under 11 minutes to go, third quarter, still tied at 14. Burks still has time. That ball looked like it slipped too. Yeah, that ball, that ball, the trajectory, that ball, the nose was down. That had to come off his hand wrong. I thought Burks was going to sprint out that time, but Tennessee holds, and now the crowd finally getting into it a little bit. Three and out for the Razorbacks. As they send their punter, Matt Wade, in to boot it away, and Terry Fair drifts back for Tennessee at the 30-yard line. Wade's had a pretty good day putting the ball. Tennessee with 10 men up. They may be coming after this ball. Fred White almost got one earlier. That's another high, long driving spiral and fair back to his 15 yard line. Gets a seam. Fair down the sideline. Terry Fair to midfield. Now it's a foot race. And Terry Fair is going to win it and score. 85 yards. UCLA and now brings one back against Arkansas well, and you're going to see a good block by number 41 Troy Pratt he got a great block on the play I think that Wade just out kicked his coverage 49 yard punt they didn't get down they had 10 men up on the line of scrimmage and they just did not cover Jeff Hall boots it through and Tennessee with the kicking game takes the lead 21 14 Terry Fair taking it back and will return after this message from Bell South. Well, the Tennessee crowd has been quiet. Now they're into it as Terry Fair has got them on their feet. Doing the wave now. Fair gives Tennessee a 21-14 lead with his second 86-yard punt return of the season for touchdowns. Corey Nichols backs up to a seven-yard line. Breaks through. That's Lottermilk instead. Lottermilk gets out to the 31 yard line. Good kickoff return by the Razorbacks. And there's Terry Fair out of Phoenix, Arizona. He had two interceptions against Alabama in the game that helped Tennessee win that contest. And then, of course, the two punt returns one against UCLA for 86, one against Arkansas for 86. Penalty flag back around the 17 yard line that apparently will pin Arkansas back. But Dave you know they haven't made many mistakes today. No they have not. That's a block in the back. Now it comes down to a poise thing for this yeah. young Arkansas team doesn't it. It certainly does. They've got to get something going on offense. That really is the first time we've heard from this crowd. Now all of a sudden they started to stand up saying hey but a lot of times you'll wake up the crowd with a big play like that. And that's what I think Tennessee has done. They needed that kind of play to get kind of the wind back in their sails. Arkansas coming out of the south end zone, and that's the student section down there. And the, the band is down there as well. Oscar Malone. 
working his way out to the 12. Not a lot there. Raymond Austin comes up. And again, Tennessee with the injuries in the defensive front now. Corey Terry uh, getting a lot of chance to play. Jonathan Brown's up front. Buck Buxton getting up there along with Antron Peebles. So some new names for Tennessee fans as Tennessee trying to make up for the loss of some very talented players like Leonard Little and today Billy Ratliff. 50 is Bill Duff. Buxton's next to him. Coleman is 92 on the outside. Pete Burks facing a second and seven. Well, listen to the thunder of the stadium, Brock. Oscar Malone, nothing there. They slam the door on him. Antron Peebles comes up, sophomore from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And now Arkansas is faced with a third and long. Well, this is misdirection, which you try to do is start weak side, kind of give a little counter action and come through and trap. But a good play there by Peebles to hold up in the inside. They really like him. He sits in the trap there, stays in there solid. They think he's going to be a great talent. Big down. You think you heard the crowd last time. Wait till this third down. Tennessee brings in an extra defensive back on third down and eight. Fade pattern, two fall. And Arkansas is going to have to punt it. He led Michael Snowden down that sideline, but it sailed into the Tennessee bench. And now the Razorbacks will be backed up, and Tennessee should get good field position. Well, that's exactly what you want to do on defense. You want to come out here. You set the tone with defense. And Tennessee's first half, they had 129 yards run against that defense. They had 14 points scored. You know they had to do a little soul searching in the locker room. And now they come out with back-to-back -back good, strong surges, held them to three and out. They're going to get great field position. And Terry Fair, who just hit lightning a minute ago with that 86-yard punt return, stands at midfield and should get a chance to return this one. Wake standing in his end zone. Wobbly kick. Fair under it. It is 45, and Fair caught it. And so now Tennessee will take over in Arkansas territory after the 40-yard punt from Wake. The Razorbacks now have to play defense as Tennessee gets it at the 46-yard line. But if you want the quarterback back there, Peyton Manning is the quarterback of the hour to come in with his team and get good pay. He said he was very critical of the defense in the past when they haven't played well. He said he was more critical of himself. Watch Wait, I thought he got hit on the tail end of this. They put a 10 man up block. Now watch the tail end when he comes down right here. Right after that, you see the flash right coming in there. I thought he got hit. He twisted and went down, but they, there was no flag. Manning down and out to his favorite receiver, Joey Kennedy. Darts out of bounds. And Tennessee picks up a first down. Joey Kent he is a finalist for the Bolitnikoff Award as the nation's outstanding wide receiver, and why not? He's got 23 career touchdown passes, needs eight more to tie Chris Doring for the all time SEC record in that department. Doring has 31, the former Gator. Of course, my old teammate, Freddie Bolitnikoff, Oakland Raiders, Florida State, he was a great one. And up, Brian Darden into the game. Darden still steps to the 20. Get out of bounds. What a block by Marcus Nash, 12. It was, you talk about a big hit. When I heard the contact, I looked up. Because as it was kicked out, see if we see number 12 right of your screen. He's the wide out. He comes back in on the backer, and I mean he levels him right there. Good block. Boy, that was a hit. Darden runs around Marcus Campbell, and then Loses his balance and down at the 20-yard line. Darden, a freshman out of Vicksburg, Mississippi. There's Marcus Nash, who's really becoming a complete wide receiver for Tennessee, catching and blocking. That time, Darden just gobbled up in the middle. Well, and this is where Tennessee is kind of bogged down in this football game. They get down in that three-down territory where, where you're in that orange zone, as they call it. Most teams call it the red zone, and they have just bogged down. Nathan Cole was there. Along with Jeremy Wilson. Well, you know, we talk about Tennessee's losses in the defensive line. Geno Bell, of course, is a mainstay for Arkansas. And he's really been out most of the year with some back problems. And then, of course, Arkansas lost Stephen Conley and Marcus Adair from last year's team. So they've really had to rebuild up front. Manning, little miscommunications there with Nash. David Barrett was on him one on one, but I think Peyton expected him to pull up. Yeah, I think he did too. But you know, the interesting, you, you talk about those players, but how about Madre Hill? Yeah, that's Take right. him out of the offensive scheme. That's like taking Leonard Little out of your defensive scheme. It means that much to your team. 
But Manning needs to come back. He needs to have one of those confidence builders on this play. It's going to be long yard. It's third down about 11. He doesn't want to force the ball like he tried to last time. He needs to throw for that first down. At least stay in field goal position. Tennessee with a third and long. Manning today, 19 of 27 for 189. But he needs a big third down conversion here with 733 to go third quarter. And his team up by a touchdown. Manning. From the blind side, the ball knocked free. And they say it's an incomplete pass. Well, the, 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 what it is is it, did his arm go forward? I thought his arm went forward. It's backside pressure. He never saw it from the backside. It's the most vulnerable side for a quarterback. They got to him. Arkansas drove him on back. Manning's had seven hurries and a sack so far in the game. Watch his arm. Does his arm come forward? Ooh, it's close. Isn't <laughs> that it? is close. But boy, that's the most that's the most vulnerable spot for a quarterback to get hit in his throwing motion. A lot of times you'll I remember there was a quarterback from Cincinnati tore his rotator cuff. Great Cook, and he never played again because he got hit in that throwing motion. 38-yard attempt. Jeff Hall boots it up and straight and through. Hall has struggled from this area. One for six on the season. It's a penalty marker down on the play. Penalty marker down with 7.23. Tennessee is clapping, and apparently it's going to be against Arkansas. And let's see if. Well, does it give him a first down? Personal first foul personal against foul. the Razor. Wow. Now what do you do? Well, you take the first down. I think you take the first down. That would put it down inside the 10 yard line or right on the 10. I hate to, I know as a coach you hate to take points off the scoreboard but again first down 10 yard line. Look at Danny Ford. He's upset. Coaches always ask who did it. Oh you know what that is. That's the center hit. That was one of the rule changes this year. The hitting on the center without letting the center get his head up. Got to give him a second. Yeah, but I'll tell you right now, on an extra point or a field goal, that's not a fair call. I just, I just don't like that call on a field goal or an extra point because you're in there tight. You're saying that the center can't be hit. They're, they're saying that they lined up on the center, they hit him, didn't give him that second. And boy, that's a big play. I mean, you turn around, that's a first down for Tennessee. Dave, I don't know if I've seen that call this year. No, I haven't seen it called. Now, it, it was really designed for the punt because a lot of times, you remember that game we did last year when they lined up and just leveled one of the centers. So it was designed to protect him. So Tennessee will take the points off the board and go to work offensively again. Manning swings it out. Jermaine Cobalt. No, that's uh, Eric Lane, number five, the fullback. That's complete. Gets out of bounds at the five yard line. Jeremy Flowers knocks him away. Well, this is the play right there in the center. Lining up in the center. I just don't see a personal foul there. I, I'll be honest with you. That well, is look, a, the official's already that. grabbing for the flag. Well, that's because they're lined up right over top. But see, he's trying to go through a seam. He's trying to go through the shoulder center guard gap through the shoulder. But what you're saying there, when that official reaches for his flag, you're saying you can't even line up on him. 7-14 to go, third quarter, Tennessee now with a second down at the five-yard line. Eric Lane caught a pass and paid for it that time. Boy, Ken Anderson, you see him shaking his head? No way, you're not going through me. The big man, Ken Anderson, he's a junior, 6'4", about 280. He's got great speed, runs well to the football. He just penetrates. Watch him, right side, comes down inside. Boom, he almost gets the handoff. He gets about two yards deep, so they actually lose yardage. Now, what do you think of your haul? And you're going to have to kick that field goal again. Well, he was one of six from that distance before the kick, so he made it. Then they take it off the board, and now Tennessee again faced with a third down. How does Arkansas Blitz try to put pressure on Manning? Do they drop back in the zones? Manning throws it into the end zone. Jump! Blitzed him. They tried to come with pressure. Manning read the pressure, just threw it up. The sixth touchdown catch of the year for Joey Kent and Peyton Manning's 48th career Five touchdown scores. strike. Now Manning has thrown touchdown passes in nine straight games, and that one to his favorite receiver, Joey Kent. Well, that was a that was a huge play because they. they 
if you watch the kick, what happened is Arkansas decided that they were going to put pressure. They came with the blitz from the outside right in his face. It didn't work. Peyton Manning at it again. A touchdown strike gives his team a two touchdown lead. We'll be back after a word from your local stations. Things going a little bit better for Smokey right now as Tennessee, after a 14 all halftime tie, has struck twice in the third quarter, lead now 28 to 14. Loudermilk and Nichols back to receive the kick from Chris Hogue. That's going to go to Loudermilk again. Picks it up before it goes out of bounds. Looking for room on the sideline and gets it out to the 22 yard line. That's where the Razorbacks will take over. You talk about Joey Kent continues to put on. Unbelievable numbers. There's Ken at 24 touchdown receptions. Still has to go away to catch Chris Doring, but he's had a remarkable career and one of the top wide receivers in the nation. Mike Hilliard sitting out there in front of him, too, but as you're talking about giving that Blitnikoff award, Freddie Blitnikoff, of course, outstanding wide receiver. Number of years in professional football. I'll never forget, he had such great concentration, so it's quite a, quite a tribute to him to name an award after him. See some of the other candidates for that award. Arkansas has had problems moving the ball lately. Last four drives have averaged three plays. Works a lot of time, but nobody's open. Now he's going to run. Buxton chases him out of bounds. Short of the first down, it looks like. You see 94, Billy Barron now into the game for Tennessee. Barron, of course, they didn't expect him to play, but because of the injury situations, Barron now sore shoulder and all is into the game for Tennessee. Yeah, we were told he was not going to play, but when you start getting down to six linemen, Eligible with the loss of Ratliff. I mean, you're talking about getting thin in your troops, so you ask him, you walk up and you say, Billy, do you think you can play? And Barron says, Yeah, give me a chance, coach. I think I can go out there and give you a, a little rest. Chris Chakuma now is the running back for the Razorbacks. They need to get something going on this possession, don't they, Dave? Yes, they certainly do. They need to break one, they need to get him out in the flat. I'm surprised they haven't tried to pull him out in the flat, run him out, and get one on one with those backers, and just dump the football to him and let him use that great speed. Tori Noel comes up from the strong safety spot. David looks like Tennessee's walking those safeties up a little bit more. They know that Arkansas wants to run it. Well, they certainly do. I and mean, every time you have a chance to, if you play in defense, your safeties are really the key. And what happens is you get out there and you start to bring those safeties up. And then all of a sudden, if you're a passing team, you've got that one on one situation. Tennessee's got to be thinking run, third down and one. The option, Burks ducks it up and gets the first down. Billy Barron got him by the ankles and got him to the ground. But I tell you what, Burks, I think, is a very effective weapon for yes, he today. You know, it's really funny. I saw that time the tight end, Joe Dean Davenport, 85, actually drove Burks into the pile and pushed him forward for the first down. That was an interesting play. It's going to be an option down the line. He just turned it right up to get the first down yardage. And now a timeout is going to be asked for. Well, that's an official's timeout, not a team timeout. That's an official. Maybe the clock. Well, Terry Fair is also walking toward the Tennessee bench. I wonder if Fair is shaking up. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's walking over there, and you see a several a couple of the people come out towards him. Kevin Ramsey, the secondary coach, is going to greet him and walk him to the sideline. I wonder if he's got his bell rung a little bit. Well, it's been a tough football game. We expected a physical football game. Arkansas, we know, is a good physical football team. They may be young, but they've got a lot of spunk. Corey Gaines now comes in for Terry Fair, so that means Tennessee's secondary shifts a little bit. Noel goes to corner, and Gaines now playing strong safety. First down, Razorbacks. Burks looking long. Pressure. He just throws it away. That might be a penalty flag. Boy, if ever you were going to see, if ever you were going to see grounding the football, you would think that was it. That ball actually looked like a shot put coming off of there, but there's no flag on the play. Good pressure by Tennessee. Jonathan Brown got to him. That's the third hurry. There is a flag down on the play. Oh, there might have been. Well, they probably oh, there should have been. They picked it up, I guess. I thought well, I saw it. Maybe I didn't. Well, watch this. You're going to see he's under a lot of pressure right there. Now, look, that's just, that's certainly not trying to complete a forward pass. Jonathan Brown, who's really emerged as a very good defensive end for Tennessee, got the pressure on him. Second and long, Arkansas. Chakuma misses one, misses two, not the third, out to the 35 yard line with Corey Gaines comes up to drop him. Bill Duff got great penetration and really disrupted the play. 
Well, anytime you have one back back there and you know you're playing a running team, it isn't hard to figure out who's going to get the football. And right now, what uh, Tennessee is doing is they're just zeroing in on, on Chakuma. They're zeroing in on Malone. They're just, they know who's going to get the football, so they're just coming after him. for Arkansas Burks just didn't have time to throw it Al Wilson and Raymond Austin finally get him out of bounds and the Razorbacks have to punt it again well the only person that was really in the pattern was Anthony Eubanks number two he had a crowd there was nobody else open now Jermaine Copeland drops back deep for Tennessee their Mr. Everything performer gets a chance to run one back here is there anything he doesn't do for him quarterback you talked about uh, he can play defensive back he can play wide receiver now he's going to play punt returner that way to boot it away, his sixth punt of the day. Well, that's a nice kick. Copeland drops back to his 20. Right up the middle and spun to the ground. Good coverage by the Razorbacks. 45 yard kick, 13 yard return. And Jamel Harris drops him for Peyton Manning going to work at the Tennessee 33. Now Derek Edmonds into the game for Tennessee. Another one of the young running backs for the Volunteers. Boy, and a couple late flags thrown into the pile way after the play was over. When I mean those flags were thrown in with authority, you're thinking personal foul. Looks like it might have been out out wide. It uh, maybe on Andy McCullough was out there. Maybe he took a late hit. Well, I saw Manning shaking his head. You know he's upset about it, but it was way after the play was over. Derek Edmonds is a guy that Philip Fulmer was very high on yesterday. Edmonds, a young freshman running back, who's kind of gone back and forth. That's the third penalty today on Philip Fulmer's club for 45 yards. Yeah, they've all been big ones. Yeah. Edmonds, a 5'10 freshman out of Tampa, Florida. And with Bryson being out for a while with Mono. And some other injuries they've had. Uh, Edmonds now gets a chance to play. You see Peyton Manning over 200 yards on the day and a couple of touchdowns. One to Joey Kent, one to Marcus Nash. Edmonds right up the middle. Tennessee with a second now and very, very long. As it moves to third down and long still. Well, if you're Arkansas, you've got to be thinking turnover. You've got to be thinking fumble, interception, something. You've got to hold them. You've got to get the football back. They're now down two scores. They've got to get the football back for their offense. They really would like to get it in good field position. So a defensive turnover would really help them. Yep, Tennessee trying to chew up some clock right now, but this is the third down and long, and you would think a passing situation as Jay Graham comes back in a tailback. Makes the little handoff, throw it long for Joey Kent. Oh, it stretches out, can't come up with it. Great effort by Kent. Well, that's as well as you can concentrate on the football. We talked about that hamstring pull early. He obviously has warmed up. It's not bothering him a lot. The knee is not bothering him. And that ball was just thrown as well as you could throw it. Great concentration by Kent to dive out at the last second. And it just goes off his fingertips. Watch this, coming off the law. Fake into the line, trying to pull the defensive corner. Now it's just a streak. And watch this. He doesn't dive until the last second, right off the fingertips. You know, if you're a quarterback, you love to see your receiver lay out for that, don't you? Yes, you do. Here's the punt. Binion gets it off the side of his foot. A dying quail that's going to come to rest at the 46-yard line. Not a good boot Gosh. by Binion. And now Arkansas gets good field position. Try the end around, they fake it. Burke's going to throw long. He still can't find it. Going to pick it up and doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. When as I look downfield, there's one guy deep, and you know who it is, Anthony Eubanks. There's nobody else out on the pattern. He's the only one running downfield. They've got five defensive backs dropping into a three deep zone. They're looking at Eubanks. They know he's the only one that's going to catch the football. One man on a pattern. That's incredible. Got to throw it to somebody else. 
got to get Snowden open or or get Baker off the line or throw it to one of your backs coming out of the backfield. You just can't run one man patterns. Second and 11. Razorbacks had great field position on the bad punt by Tennessee. Let's see if they can take advantage of all. That time, nothing there. Jonathan Brown and Jeff Coleman pick up Burks and slam him to the turf. Well, there's the switch. They move Jonathan Brown over to that side because Burks likes to come that way on the toss. And what Jonathan Brown did is he faked like he was going to take the pitch. Watch this. You're going to see him in your screen. 91. He fakes like he's going to take the pitch. Then he comes right back and look at that. He just lifts up the quarterback, just kind of like sorting them all out and dumps them. 90 seconds to go third quarter Arkansas with a big third down and 13 now. Here comes a blitz. Over the middle Eubanks is there. He's got the first down but there is a penalty marker down. That flag was thrown on the line of scrimmage so it's almost something in the line you think it's yeah it's illegal motion. Well, look, Eubanks got open in the secondary, but they moved. And look at Burks. You can see the sophomore reaction. It's the first chance he's had to find a wide receiver over the middle. He delivers a perfect strike. It's going to be a first down. It's negated because of emotion. Well, there's Eubanks, number two, right over the middle. Gets in that seam and underneath the zone right there. It's the first chance that really Burks has had the chance to deliver a strike, and it's negated. Well, gosh, we're playing. What's what's the score? 28-14. I remember when it was like 14-14. Burks blitz throws it long, and he's got his man. Michael Snowden was he out of bounds or did he oh. catch it? He I, caught it, but they say he was out of bounds. Well, he may have bobbled the football because he looked like he when he when he came in contact with the ball, it looked like he was far enough in bounds, but he may have bobbled the football. But what a good throw by Burks. This is the first time he's gone anybody other than Eubanks and let's watch Snowden as he comes across. See when he catches the football that's plenty of room. Now he's bobbling. Right yeah there. yeah you're right it came down inside bobbled the football again going on the out pattern this is a nice pattern but he doesn't catch it clean. And of course Philip Fulmer right there to officiate a little bit. Well the official in great position to make the call. Jermaine Copeland to get back for Tennessee on the punt. That's another booming high spiral. Copeland back to his 11. Looks for the wall. It's one block. It's two. Stays on his feet and out to the 40 yard line. Great effort by Jermaine Copeland. 28 yards on the return on a 51 yard kick. Well, that's just a great play. There were some good blocks on that play, but what a heads up play by Copeland. He backed up and fielded the ball. You see how far he backed up. He backed up inside the 10 yard line. Then he gets a couple good blocks. Right here he gets one block. Bam right there. Now he gets another block up there. Comes on the outside. Keeps his balance and picks up about another 10 yards after he's almost knocked down. Greg Johnson I think had the block that sprung him. But Copeland moves the ball out. And Tennessee has good field position at the 40 yard line. Brian Darden. Now a tailback for Tennessee. The Volunteers have rotated a lot of them back there and some young ones. And Darden takes the fake. Manning pressured, throws it. The ball's complete to his tight end. Dustin Moore into Arkansas territory. Knocked down at the 43. Let's go back down to Dave Baker. Bob Rush Brown, the outstanding offensive guard for Arkansas. He's the first offensive player for Arkansas, first freshman really, to start every game as a freshman since freshman eligibility came into play. He's got a cracked vertebrae in his back. Hadn't practiced a lot this week. He's got the helmet off. Looks like he's done for the day. Dave, I know they put a pad on it, but I guess he just couldn't go with it, huh? Yeah, the problem is down here on this Arkansas sideline, it's shady. And when you've got a bad back, you're not getting that sun. You're going to stiffen up a lot more quickly. All right, Dave, thanks. Marcus Nash showing some nifty moves and gets it inside the 35. Peyton Manning says Marcus has got that little wiggle. And that time Nash was able to wiggle it down to the 35. Now there's an Arkansas player down. Boy, there was a big hit out there by. I didn't catch the number right off but it might have been Darden the running back number eight he leveled the corner on that little hitch play. I mean stuck him right in the chest. Might be Chris Chalmers but I don't know I can't see the number. Well Darden comes out what they do is they throw that ball underneath and they allow the the uh, lineman and the backs to sprint out there and try to pick him off and what the receiver does is he comes back underneath it 
And I think it was Darden who just leveled the corner. Just leveled him. 12 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Well, he knocked the wind out of his sails. Mm. And it is Chris Chalmers who is now being helped by the Arkansas medical staff to the sideline. Chalmers, a freshman out of Rogers, Arkansas. Watch the top of your screen. Watch Darden. Eight. There's Darden coming in. Now watch the tail end of this. When he comes back inside, see Darden? He's just zeroing him. Bam! Wow, that was a big hit. He splinked him a little bit, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. Chalmers, tough kid, gets up. He's only a freshman. He's got a lot of years ahead of him. That's one of the things about Arkansas that they are really, they're really focusing on. They've got such a young team. We talk about, when you talk about 40 man squads, you see that this Arkansas team's got probably 25 to 30 in that first 40 men. Now the clock is going to wind down, and that'll be the end of the third quarter. Tennessee drew the only blood in the third period. Two touchdowns, one by Fair, one by Kent. And now Tennessee has a 28 14 lead over Arkansas as we head to the fourth quarter on a homecoming day in Knoxville. Tennessee put the clamps on the Arkansas running attack in the third quarter to build this lead. And now Peyton Manning's got Tennessee on the march again as we start the fourth quarter. Bob Kessling, Dave Rowe, Dave Baker with you from Neyland Stadium today. Over 103,000 fans on hand for homecoming. And now Tennessee trying to add to the lead. Ryan Darden gets down to the 30. Darden, an interesting story. Of course, a highly recruited running back out of Vicksburg, Mississippi. You look at the third quarter stats and Tennessee trying to really rack them up. Darden was a little bit upset with his playing time and uh, then it skipped practice one day and is back on the team. The Mazda stats show that uh, Tennessee with 301 in the third quarter through three quarters and Arkansas with 173. Well, you see the game starting to turn Tennessee's way. That offensive line that we talked about with the shuffle, they played. All five of those linemen played the exact same positions. They didn't make any changes in that third quarter. Manning, pump fake, now throws. Kent's got it. There's a flag down. Kent down to the 13-yard line. Right in the middle of the offensive line is where that flag went, so you got to think that's got to be holding. But Kent made a nice catch across the middle and Manning threw a bullet. Oh boy. There. Well what he did is he saw that strong side pressure coming on him and I mean he held it to the last second and just kind of bam threw it and I mean they was coming on him. It's an outside blitz. We have a player down in the secondary. Looks but like Deron Moss is down. And I think that's going to be holding against Tennessee. And Moss is he looks like he might be holding his arm. You see him holding right there. They're holding his, his looks like it might be his left arm. Moss, a freshman at Alexa, Arkansas. I think I see Danny Ford walking out there for a minute. I thought that was Danny Ford walking all the way out there. He made the stop on. Joey Kent and now the medical staff again. Yeah that's Danny Ford. He's all the way out on the field. What happens with the defensive back when you reach out a lot of times you can you can literally take whale of a, you know of a hit on your arm. So as the Tennessee and Arkansas medical staffs check on Moss we'll take a break where score is Tennessee 28 Arkansas 14 back in a moment. They brought the card out now for Don Moss as they will take him off. That's Dean Weber the Director of Sports Medicine, Medicine for Arkansas, helping him on to the card. Also, the Tennessee trainers out there, Mike Rodo. Well, you see, they're holding his left arm. It may be the shoulder, but I thought it was in the wrist area. When he goes down on the play, watch his arm right of your screen. It's the left arm. You see it just come down. You see the elbow coming down right there? Oh, you see the hand? He comes down on the wrist. You see the hand on the ground, and it gets bent up underneath him. Then the pile falls on top of him. But you know that was an interesting picture you made mention that both medical staffs were out there. You see Tennessee people are out there just like Arkansas in the, in the same situation would be vice versa if it's a Tennessee player. There's Dean Weber on the right and then Mike Rolo with the Tennessee sweatshirt on the head trainer for Tennessee and you hate to see a young man like this hurt part of the game and Moss now taken off to the field of the crowd here at Neyland Stadium. Gives him a round of applause as they will cart him off to the Arkansas locker room. Might be his shoulder, Dave. It's hard to tell. Dave Baker will be down there to check on it. Well, it's either shoulder, elbow, or, or wrist. 
That's a tough one. A lot of times you'll get your arm stuck in there. You're making a tackle. And when you come down, the pile actually comes down on top of you. Back to the game. Tennessee after the penalty is now first and 25. The Volunteers have thrown the ball 34 times today. They've rushed it 17. And Peyton Manning barking them out. Now the shotgun again. Manning, little handoff. Edmonds can't get free. And Mark Smith. Boy, he's a terrific linebacker. And there's Melvin Bradley again. They have just been all over the field today for the Razorbacks. Yeah, number 41. He plays like a linebacker, even though he plays that nose position. But I think Arkansas has played really good football today. Anderson's been all over. Bradley's played well. We haven't heard Ryan Hale's name a lot, but he's played good football. But Smith and Hicks on the inside, they played well on defense. I'll tell you where they had their problem. They couldn't move the football in the third quarter. They got that punt return, and the entire momentum of the football game kind of changed on them. Smith picked off his fifth pass in his career. Edmonds on the swing pass. And again, terrific play. As Edmonds can't get free, and the stop is made on the outside by Vincent Bradford. And Bob, we did hear a confirmation that it is a broken wrist. Not a major injury, not, not one that's debilitating, you know, where he can't come back and play, but quite an injury for a young man, just a freshman. He might be done this year. Though. Yeah, yeah, he probably will be. Dave Beck will give us uh, more of an update when news is available. He's confirmed the broken wrist and will tell us more when he can. 12.53 to go, clock running, fourth quarter. Tennessee with the only points this half, leading 28-14. We were tied at halftime, 14 all. Manning, the fly pattern. McCullough working up at the last moment. Great play by Marcus Campbell. Get back on McCullough, and Tennessee's going to have to punt it away. Boy, I'll tell you, that is a tough play. You're running after, you're running after the wide receiver, and Campbell just gets that hand in there and just swats that ball down. That's as well as you can play man-on-man -man coverage. There's the fake in the line. Now you go deep on the post route, try to lay it up there, and watch Campbell come in. He's behind him. He can't put the arm on him. He just rips that ball down with his left hand. I think, I think Peyton and, yeah. uh, and McCullough thought they had a touchdown, didn't well, they? Well, they certainly did. They've, they've seen that play an awful lot. Four scores. Here's Binion. That's a better punt. Tries to pooch it inside the 10, and it'll be fair caught by Eubanks. Back at the 10-yard line. 30-yard punt, but it's the position. 36-yard punt, excuse me. And it's the position that time as they pin him back deep. Well, if Arkansas ever wants to get back in this football game, this is the series that they have got to do it. They've got to take some pressure off their defense. They've got to move that football out. They've got to put first downs together, and nobody knows that more than Danny Ford. You know, field position, Davis, really played a big role in the second half. Tennessee's kept them pinned back. Yeah, especially when you have a, an offense that kind of sputters. You're being led by a very young quarterback, Pete Burks. You've only got really one wide receiver who's got any, any bunch of catches, and that's Eubanks. Your running game's had a little bit of success, but you've got to move the football right now. And Arkansas wants a timeout. Tennessee threw a little whammy at him that time, and Arkansas says they want to talk about it. So Pete Burks will go talk with Rocky Felker and Danny Ford. 12.33 to go. Arkansas needs something good to happen. We'll be back to Neyland Stadium in a moment. Arkansas after the timeout. The Razorbacks have one left now. They need two touchdowns to tie. Their drives this half have started at the 33, the 9, the 21, the 46, and now the 10. And they haven't really been able to put anything together, any kind of long, sustained drive like they had in the first half. Burks to air it out and overshoots everybody. Trying to hit Jodine Davenport, but he was way off the mark. Boy, and you talk about a defense that has stepped up. Tennessee's defense has really stepped up. They have they've just taken the control of this football game. You remember one of the rewinds we said that they had to stop the run? Arkansas only had 19 yards in that third quarter. Total offense. You know, in the first half, they also had a 15-play drive for a touchdown. This half, all told, they've only had 16 plays. So Tennessee's defense has turned it up this half. Burks again. This time hands it off to Oscar Malone. He is greeted by Antron Peebles, who knocks him down at the 12-yard, maybe the 13. So a game of a couple. And so Pete Burks again faced with a third and long. And Malone may be hurt. You see, he's down on the field. He can't even come to the sideline. May have turned that right ankle. Malone with 44 yards rushing. So now Dean Weber and his Arkansas training staff, they've got another player to attend to. Dave Baker reports they have taken 
Moss to the hospital. They brought an ambulance in to here at Neyland Stadium, and I imagine they're going to take him to UT Hospital to get that wrist looked at. Now Malone is hobbled. Oscar, of course, it's been an amazing story. Just his whole career has been bothered by injuries. The knee, he tried to come back, got up to a slow start, and seemed like he finally had it going. Yeah, the last four games, he has really put it together. He had 446 yards in the last four games rushing. And I think they kind of felt that he finally had all those injuries behind him and now he comes up with an ankle sprain has to be taken out of the football game. It puts a lot of pressure on the freshman Chikuma. Chikuma is going to have to respond here. And I just think Burks has got to go downfield. I think he's got to get some time look for those crossing patterns. If he has to throw to Eubanks he's got to throw to him but he's got to throw the football. Swing pass to Kuma drops it. You know, Dave coming into the game, they thought they had an advantage with their running backs on Tennessee's linebackers in pass situations, but they haven't thrown one very well. No, they haven't tried, and that really has been a surprise to me. They thought they could use Chakuma's speed on the outside and Malone on the outside, dump the football to him, get him in that foot race with their linebackers, but it really have they have not done anything with that. So now Copeland will drop back. Remember Terry Fair, who ran a punt back, is now a little woozy on the Tennessee sideline, so he's been replaced by Copeland. And Matt Waite's been a busy man today. Yeah, but how about uh, Copeland on that last one? He really brought it back. Good high kick. Arkansas trying to get down to cover it. Copeland at his 40. It's one block. A lot of white shirts there, and Copeland just dives out to the 48-yard line, and that's where Tennessee will take over. 46-yard punt and an eight-yard return for Copeland, and Tennessee has it first and ten. Nathan Cole downfield covering for the Razorbacks. Well, you see Tennessee try to bounce back after the loss last week. They still have Kentucky here and then have to go to Vanderbilt. And Dave, what we saw from Vanderbilt last week against Florida, Commodores will be ready for Tennessee. Yes, they will. They gave Florida everything that they could handle last week. And of course, Vanderbilt played Tennessee tough here last year. Penalty flag down. Manning airs it out to Joey Kent, who steps out of bounds. Should be a first down. We'll see what the penalty flag is. You can tell by Joey's reaction, it's against Tennessee. Yeah, it has to be against. No, I, I thought it would be against uh, Arkansas offsides lining up in the neutral zone. Huh. <laughs> See, because if, if it's an offensive lineman, they blow the whistle and stop the play. If it's a defensive lineman, they let the play go. So what does he say? Offsides on the defense. How do you like that, Bob? You got that one. I, mis right, I misread Joey Ken. I, he looked like he was <laughs> a little bit upset with the play. Well, Joey's probably thinking I could go all the way. Well, maybe that was it. <laughs> well, you know, one thing it's good to see about him is that that hamstring's not bothering him. He, uh, he didn't practice much this week. They didn't think he was even going to be able to play. Thought they would read him in the uh, in the pre in the warm-ups, but he's really been re just really responded well. Manning again goes out. Fearless Price puts the move on down the sideline of the 21-yard line and out of bounds. Knocked down by Justin Brown. You know, Price and McCullough, interesting story. McCullough actually, Tennessee was looking at a quarterback at Meadowdale. They sent him a film. Philip Palmer was looking at it. He said, wait a minute. Who's that 88 guy? That's Andy McCullough. So McCullough, then he sees also Fearless Price on the field. Barrett now limping off for Arkansas. Yeah, he, had, he had the coverage on that play. He looked like he twisted his knee or so, but watch Price throw it out to him. They just, he just, man, he gets the ball to him so quickly and just allows him, watch this. He's going to plant. Now watch Barrett when he comes up. See, he plants. You see him quickly pick up that right foot. He hurt himself. When he planted, he just didn't come down right. Five catches now for Peerless Price. Manning trying to throw back, lobs it to no one. Price almost got there. I think Manning was throwing it away. He was knocked out for the first time, I think, this half. And now Manning gets up slowly. Well, Manning is not straightening out that right leg. He's limping terrible on that leg. I'll tell you this, with a 14-point with a lead, I must think you almost might rest Manning. Watch this. He's going to get a lot of pressure. Coming from the backside, strong side now when he gets rid of the football, you see he falls down. When he gets up, he doesn't straighten out his leg. He leaves his right leg stiff when he gets up. I almost think it's time to take Peyton Manning out. Ken Anderson, Peyton th thought he got hit a little bit late that time as Anderson planted him. And Manning's numbers trying to get to 300 yards again. Jay Graham. You know, they've gotten him outside a little bit, although Arkansas came up and... Uh, that's on Pendy, but they've tried to give Graham a chance to get outside a little more. Boy, look at Manning. Look at Manning. He's limping. That leg is straight. 
I wish on the handoff that time he looks like a hobbled warrior going back there trying to live, get the ball off. He cannot bend the leg. Look at this. He's walking in there. Now take him out. That's the time to take him out. Keep him ready. And I look at the concern on Philip Fulmer. Well, that's the orthopedic yeah. surgeon, too. Bill Yeomans right yeah. next to him. Well, look, look at the leg. I mean, you see him. He cannot go. He's just not running at all. That lip, it's like he's limping with a straight leg. Manning zips it. Joyce Kiss down. He'll be short of the first down. The ball at the 16 yard line. Now, this is when you take your quarterback over to the side and you say, How are you doing? It's obviously stiff. You can see he's just kind of dragging it. He's such a such a fine outstanding quarterback. You just don't and you see him talking right there talking to one of the people just saying he's just telling him you can see a quarterback dejection when he puts his hands out and says I just don't have the zip on the football for Philip Fulmer. He's got to make the decision. Do you take Manning out with nine and a half minutes left. You've got a 14 point lead. Can you count on your defense to stop him. If he kicks this field goal and makes it his answer may come true. Thirty three year on attempt is good for Jeff Hall. And Tennessee pushes the lead out to 31 to 14. That's Mike Rollo, Tennessee trainer, talking to Manning. Well, I know Manning wants to stay in. But when you have an outstanding quarterback like that, and you want him to play next year, and you want all those different things, and you've got a couple big games remaining, and you've got a good chance at a bowl, you don't take chances with a quarterback of that caliber. So Jeff Hall. Kicked a field goal earlier that didn't count. They took it off the board. Now he comes back and boots another one. He's now two for seven from that area from the 30 to the 39. Tennessee leads at 31 14, but all eyes in the stadium are on Peyton Manning and whether or not he is done for the day. And you know, you know something interesting. He did not sit down. He's standing up. He's staying up with that leg. Most quarterbacks will go over after they've had a series and they'll sit down. But Manning does not sit down. He's just kind of hobbling around. You see the brace on that right leg. He's not going to sit down. Look at the dejection on him. You don't think he's winning by 14 points. You can just read it in his face. Look at his face as he picks up the phone and talks, of course, to David Cutcliffe up, up here in the, in the booth. Doesn't look like you're winning quarterback, does it? 9.27 to go. Tennessee will kick it off back to Arkansas. Corey Nichols, Hubert Loudermilk will be deep for the Razorbacks. Spinner coming down to Loudermilk at the six. A couple of big hits in the middle, and Tennessee rides him down. Eric Westmoreland again on top of Loudermilk, who thought he might have had a chance to break that one. So the Razorbacks, who have done virtually nothing offensively in the second half, now take over again at their own 21 yard line. Well, I look for Burks in this situation. He's got to get one of those wide receivers one on one. He's got to throw a streak. He's got to throw a go pattern. He's got to do something to get his offense cranked up because if he doesn't he's going to run out of time. You only have about two to maybe three more chances with the football. New cornerbacks in for Tennessee. A couple of freshmen Gerald Griffith and Dwayne Goodrich. Highly touted. Now they get a chance to play. Puma. King misses. Ryan slows him up and finally built up polishes him off. Corey Gaines also over there for Tennessee. One thing that uh, uh, Rocky Felker told us before the game, it's the Tennessee speed on defense that you can't oh. compensate and you can't really uh, practice against it during the week because your scout team doesn't have the speed yeah. Tennessee does. Yeah, your, your team does not have the speed. There's Rocky. Oh, Rocky's right there with the hat right next to Danny Ford. He's their offensive coordinator. And he's right because Tennessee's got that great line speed where they run the line so well you try to show that in your practice and scout squads, but it's awfully hard to do. Let's it fly for Eubanks. It's picked off by Jason Parker. Parker to the 30. There's a penalty flag down. He's knocked down as he gets down inside the 20. Brandon Brolsworth knocks him down, gets the tackle, but we'll see what the penalty marker is. Well, that flag is thrown on the line of scrimmage. You see Arkansas coming to the sideline. The legal formation. So that's not going to negate that penalty, that uh, interception. Parker's going to get his first interception of the year. Brian Darden in a tailback. Manning looking, firing for Joey Kent. That's another one. Touchdown, Tennessee. Boy, have 
We've seen that play a bunch over the years with Peyton Manning. Just that little dart where Joey Kent gets even on the on the cornerback and then just breaks it into the post. This is it. Play action right here now. Just drop back, throw it up high, not under any pressure, and look at the clearance that Joey had. Joey Kent, number 11, just separates himself from the corner of the safety. Jeff Hall tacks on the extra point. And Tennessee builds the lead to 38 to 14. It's been a second half explosion for Tennessee. We were tied at halftime at 14 all, and it's been all Tennessee here in the second with 8.21 to go in the fourth quarter. 50 touchdown passes now in his career for Peyton Manning. Loudermilk comes up to his own eight yard line. And again, he's knocked down before he gets to the 20. Arkansas offensive drives this half. The first one went for two and a punt. Six yards and a punt in their second. 14 yards and a punt in their third. Minus eight on their fourth possession. Four yards and a punt and zero in the interception. New quarterback now in. Clint Sterner comes in for the Razorbacks. Another young quarterback, a freshman. They think he's going to be a good one, and now he gets some playing time here with 8.15 to go. Yeah, really Arkansas they played such a good half of football because they were able to control the clock and they got all their offense in that first half of the game. Nothing there to come. Comes down Sean Johnson now into the game makes the stop along with Al Wilson. Sean Johnson another one of the young players on the Tennessee defense a freshman out of Louisville now playing middle linebacker for Tennessee. They're grooming him to take over for Tyrone Hines next year. Boy, it's really an interesting half of football. What a difference in the first half and the second half for Arkansas. And he just about fumbled this football at the tail end of it. Look at there. He doesn't put the ball away, away very well. Sterner hands the ball off. Jacoba fumbles it. Loose ball. Tennessee's got it. John Johnson comes up with a loose ball and Danny Ford's team turns it over. Jermaine Copeland coming into the game. And he should come in. This game is in control. The one thing you don't want to do is hurt that quarterback. Philip Fulmer knows they have at least two maybe three games left. And of course from Tennessee's perspective they hope a lot of games next year. Oh yeah. Aiden will stick around. He says he'll talk about that. At the end of the season and not before, and he's pretty much stuck to his guns on that. Jermaine Copeland, well, we've seen him as a wide receiver, as a kick returner, and now as a quarterback for Tennessee. Pitch back. Darden on the corner. Gets a block from Eric Lane. And Darden down to the end zone. Did he get in? Oh, that was close. Anytime you take that pylon down, it's supposed to be a score. It all depends where the ball went across. I think they did call the touchdown. Did I don't they give him the touchdown. Signal. Yeah, they did. Touchdown. Brian Darden gets into the end zone for the score for Tennessee. It's a good run by Darden. Run into the pylon. Don't tell me they're going to go for two. Now wait a minute. This is an odd. No, you don't do that. That's Darden's first touchdown. Lead now goes to 45 to 14. Tennessee's taking advantage of an interception and a fumble to get two quick scores. Now watch the block by the up back. That's Lane. He gets a great block right here. Boom! He just kicks him right out. Darden scoots inside. Now he's looking at that pylon. Look at that pylon, and the ball hits the pylon. That's the that's the touchdown. Good call by the official. Again, watch that block by Lane five. He just eats up the corner, forces him outside, allows Darden to cut underneath. Watch the ball. Yep, right over the top. Yep. Good call. Brian Darden gets in. They think he's going to be a good running back. You know what? I thought his knees were down. Wait a minute. When his knee was down, wherever that ball was, ooh, that was kind of close. Yeah, maybe we made to, we might need to look at that again. Great pictures here. Now, right there's the knee down. And the ball has not crossed the line of scrimmage. Arkansas at 154 yards total offense in the first half. This half, 15. Chakuma looking up the middle. Knocked down. 
on Tennessee now getting a lot of the reserves into the game. Sewell made the stop there along with Gerald Griffin. And their balloon hovering above the stadium here. Sterner to Chukuma. That'll be a first down for the Razorbacks. Six and a half minutes to go. Tim Sewell makes the stop for Tennessee. Interesting. Still, still running the football. When you're down, you're down by a lot of points. Still you know, run the you football. You know, Dave, you were talking about at halftime with Philip Fulmer was talking to his defense. I mean, this was a Tennessee defense who was ranked second in the league in total defense, and Arkansas pretty much manhandled yeah. physically. But it's been totally different in the second half. It certainly has. I think that's that's the thing. Oh, we had a fumble late. Another fumble picked up. Dwayne Goodrich picks it up. That's another fumble for the Razorbacks. And now Tennessee will get it deep in Arkansas territory again. I wondered if he was down. I thought he was down for a minute. The official came in and marked the spot, but that's just to mark where the fumble occurred. Look at Danny Ford standing out there. He is ill. You can't put the football on the ground. You can't turn it over against a great team. And that is really what has really just been insurmountable for Arkansas in the second half. They've made a lot of mistakes. You can see Danny Ford look at his running back when he goes by. Running back, look at him, looking back towards the bench. You new, don't want to talk to the coach. New quarterback now for Tennessee, T. Martin. Another freshman from Mobile gives off to Derek Edmonds. And Edmonds down to the 25-yard line. You know, traditionally, these games between Tennessee and Arkansas have been very, very close. When you go back to even the 1971 game, Arkansas lost that game to Tennessee 14-13. Then they came back and won here in 92, 25-24. Then there was a 28-14 Tennessee win, a 38-21, and last year 49-31. So it's, they've been traditionally pretty close, but Tennessee has really put the wood to them in the second half. Still hit the hard. Edmonds takes it down inside the 25 yard line. Clock ticks to five and a half minutes. Jamel Harris makes the stop for Arkansas. Well, you look at this uh, at this Tennessee team, a lot of players getting a chance. I noticed that Sam Pinner's in its center. You're getting uh, Brent Gibson's playing a guard. You're getting a lot of different players that are getting some snap time. And that's important because when you get one of those injuries to a Leonard Little, you've got to have somebody to step up. When you get an injury to one of your offensive linemen, you've got to have one of those linemen step up. We see Brent Gibson, 51, now playing left guard. He's played center. He's played right guard in the game. Sam Pinner is Tennessee's third center of the game. Now he's in there. And T. Martin, he's got a great arm. Lost it into the end zone, and that's going to be knocked away. Intended for Jermaine Copeland. Back was Kennedy for Arkansas to knock it free. So one quarterback trying to hit the other quarterback on the fly pattern. Well now is, ten, is Arkansas going to kick a field goal or are they just going to go for it. But again good loft right here. But it allows the secondary to come up there and react. They react back to the play. You see double coverage club high almost an interception. Good play there by by Copeland to pull the ball away. Don't Jeff you know, Hall to try the field goal 46 yards. I was going to say Bob don't you know it's been a tough week for Philip Fulmer. A lot of criticism about that Memphis game. Hall drills that one straight and true. So Jeff Hall, he kind of like a golfer. He was in a little bit of a slump, but he's come out strong today. Another field goal attempt. And Tennessee's late now. Balloons to 48-14. We'll be back for the Tennessee kickoff in a moment. New kicker for Tennessee, Robert Lottermill. Swips one up and it's picked up by Lottermill of Arkansas. The flag is down as he Brings it out to the 27 yard line. Glad you're with us. Tennessee with a second half explosion leads Arkansas 48 to 14, 429 to go in the game. And troubles continue for the Razorbacks as now they will be penalized for a block in the back. A very frustrating half for Danny Ford. Nothing there. Corey Nichols. Try to get outside and Tennessee swarmed him. The orange shirts there with Corey Terry and also Fred White coming up from the safety position. Tennessee now has Kentucky here next week. That'll be Bill Curry's final game. And then they close out at Vanderbilt. So those are two emotional games for yep, Tennessee. Absolutely. Two big games. Of course they want to they want to get in that chance. They've got a lot of people who are looking at the possibility of Tennessee going up against uh, Penn State. If Penn State wins today, they could possibly go against them. So again. A lot of things to go for. And 
think Penn State has already won. I think somebody told me that against Michigan. They were leading in the fourth. Nichols tries to find a seam, pushes it out to the 10 yard line. Buck Buxton steps up. One thing for Tennessee, they've gotten a lot of young guys into the game today. Greg Johnson now in there, the linebacker for Tennessee. That's Buck Buxton up front. Sean Johnson. Tennessee, one thing Philip Fulmer does extremely well is recruit. And he's brought a oh lot boy. of good young talent in here with a lot of speed. And that's what I think all the coaches we talk around the league, Dave, they talk about Tennessee's speed on defense yes. and how much better they are up front. Oh, they are. They're much better. They're, they're quick. They don't get knocked down. They slide to the ball really, really well. And it starts with that speed. You've got to have speed today. When I look at defensive line play, 10 years ago, if you ran 5 2, 5 3, you were really moving as a defensive lineman. Today, you've got to run 5 flat. Sterner airs it out. Eubanks, that's picked off. Another interception. Dwayne Goodrich picks it off. Steps through one tackle to the 20 on the corner. He's going to take it in for a touchdown. <laughs> 45 yards on the touchdown by Dwayne Goodrich. You talk about a dying quail, and I heard you use that term earlier. That pass was a dying quail. They just zeroed in under it. It's like you're catching a ball out in the center field. Sturmer should never have thrown this football, at least not on the trajectory that you throw it, because the safety was able to come so far over to get it. It is now 54-14. Tennessee trying to tack on a 55th point. And stop and think about this. This one was 14-14 at half. Arkansas led 14-7. Yeah, I know. We're talking about a lot of points in the second half. Again, watch this ball. When you're under pressure as a quarterback, you don't throw it up for grabs, and that's what he does. Watch this. No speed. He's running away. He just throws it way. Look how high the ball is. Circle under it. That's exactly what he does. Circles under it. Comes down with a big play. Goodrich is saying, hey, give me a couple blocks. I can make it. That's incredible. You can't throw the football like that. Not in this league. Not against what, what we were just talking about. Boy, now that was the worst hit he got of the game. Watch, watch this tail end hit. Fred White levels him. Bam! Boy, that's quite a hit. He may have to be in the training room on Monday. Well, some of these lessons freshmen learn yeah. are painful, and sometimes they're in front of big audiences, but you learn from them and get better from them. Well, you put a lot of pressure on a young quarterback. I mean, you bring him in this situation. First of all, the defense is just, the defensive line is just flying off the football. They've lost one of their running backs. So, I mean, nothing's going for them. Then they've only, you've only got one wide receiver, really, in Anthony Eubanks with any any kind of consistency in catching the football. So you're so limited on your arsenal. And the young man's just trying to put a little bit of something, just trying to do a little bit more than what he's able to do. Corey Terry makes the stop. There is Sterner. They think he's going to be a good one. Yeah, he'll learn from this. Although he's already thrown five interceptions this year. And no touchdowns. Right now, everybody's looking at number 23, saying, where in the world did he come from? Dwayne Goodrich, 23, he's just a freshman. Look at Danny Ford. He's just, boy, he is, I tell you, you can hear his wisdom teeth grinding all the way up here. Goodrich, a freshman out of Oakland, Illinois, regarded as one of the best defensive backs to come out of high school last year, and he's made a couple of big plays this half. You can't get careless with the football. I think Bill B Buck Buxton might have knocked that football out of there. But you can't get careless in the middle. T. Martin back in at quarterback for Tennessee. 149 to go in the game. 55 14 in Tennessee on the march again. Martin rolling out. Pressure and dropped. Yeah, this is just run time. I would really be surprised if Philip Fulmer lets them put the ball in the air. Wait a minute. Now I just saw a flag come out. I mean, you talk about late in the game. <laughs> it was almost like they were running back to the huddle. And the official ran over and threw a flag right by a, an Arkansas player. And it's a personal foul on Arkansas. David Sanders made the stop on T. Martin, and it was a dead ball play. Might have been Melvin Bradley in the middle. Melvin Bradley, no, Melvin Bradley's our 
personal foul. Player of the game. On the defense, 15-yard penalty from that spot. First down. Wow. And Danny Ford just sees all the wheels falling off the wagon. 137 to go on the game. And you know, that's really got to grind him because they played so well in the first half. He had his team prepared. They had a good game plan. For Philip Fulmer, it's got to be rewarding because there's a lot of chances that your team can lose confidence in you when you lose a game like they did against the first Memphis. Edmonds is blasted that time as he comes through there. Norman Nero makes the stop on Edmonds. Well, I'd be surprised if they let him throw the football in this situation. Of course, you got a quarterback back, back there who hasn't had a lot of chances to throw. Mark coming in this game, he only got one chance to throw one pass, so he's wanting to. Clock is down to 109 to go in the game. Tennessee leading 55 14. Edmonds trying to get outside and is knocked down before he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Gerald Anderson has been our statistician, and Brent Hubbs has helped us up in the booth spotting. Under a minute to play as the volunteers are about ready to win their seventh game of the season and this was their 1,000th career football game. Tennessee's record now 663, 284, and 53. Now, Bob, were you down there before the game yeah. when John Ward announced to the crowd who was producing this game? Did, did you hear that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> 24 <laughs> seconds to go. <laughs> Again, we want to thank Beverly Rumley today and who is our Burchette, producer our producer our real producer <laughs> and Dave Burchett our director today and the rest of the crew there's a fumble and Edmonds falls on it that might be the last play of the game 10 seconds and the clock now ticks down and Tennessee on a homecoming afternoon is going to win their 73rd homecoming game and Philip Fulmer's team back on the winning side of things beating Arkansas convincingly in the second half final score Tennessee 55 and Arkansas 14 our discover card players of the game Peyton Manning for Tennessee 28 of 41 for 282 yards and three touchdowns another sparkling performance by Manning who now has 50 career touchdowns to his credit and for the Arkansas Razorbacks Melvin Bradley with four tackles and a sack our discover card players of the game. Melvin Bradley and the Razorbacks dejectedly walked to the locker room tied at halftime but it was all Tennessee in the second half volunteers win at 55 14 we'll be back in a moment showed that he may have a twisted ankle first and goal Tennessee Manning going to work quick hit to the middle touchdown Marcus Nash Manning seven of ten now in this first quarter and Marcus Nash hauls in his third touchdown of the season. Well he may have hurt his ankle but he didn't hurt that golden arm. He throws a strike in there on that crossing pattern to Nash and his offensive line picked up a blitz. Manning throws it into the end zone. Blitzed him. They tried to come with pressure. Manning read the pressure, just threw it up. The sixth touchdown catch of the year for Joey Kent and Peyton Manning's 48th career nice touchdown throw. strike. Now Manning has thrown touchdown passes in nine straight games, and that one to his favorite receiver, Joey Kent. The tailback. Manning looking, firing for Joey Kent. That's another one. Touchdown, Tennessee. 